here's a lockpick. It might be handy if you, the master of unlocking, take it with you. Looting through the rubble, leaving cities war torn, still incurring more scorn. Ragged and I'm forlorn, trying to unlock this. Open with my lockpicks, punching with my second hand every time the clock ticks. Okay, so give us a moment or so as the first instant reward goes up. We're just testing to see if the audio works. Hi, Game Master. Nice to see you. Okay. Perfect. Audio works. Yay. Move this chair over. All right. Hi. Happy New Year, everybody. Welcome to the show, The Master of Unlocking. Uh, with introductions here, my name is, uh, people on the internet call me Side Pocket. I am one of the two co-founders of DEF CON 201. DEF CON 201 is a uh, computer hacker and tinkerer group based out of uh, Jersey City, New Jersey. Uh, if you want to know more information such how we meet the third Friday of the month and that this upcoming meeting is literally very soon. It's going to be on, oh, there's like a Dutch angle thing going on here. That's bizarre. Okay. Let's fix that later. Uh, but yeah, no, we, uh, bleh. We have, uh, we're going to be meeting on uh, January uh, 15th, 2021. Thankfully, we're past 2020 and we can breathe now. So uh, if you want to get notified of those and also see all the other stuff that's going on, get, uh, which way is it? There we go. Get the incense reward and things like that. You can hit that bell, click like, share, subscribe on Twitch, D Live, YouTube, and recently Facebook, although we're still working out the kinks with Facebook because Facebook doesn't like anything kinky. And, uh, yeah, uh, thank you for tuning in again. It wouldn't be a master of unlocking if we weren't slightly late for this. I apologize. Uh, there's a bit more set up than I thought there was going to be on this episode tonight. So, but we're ready here. So, uh, as I take a quick hydration squad break, first hydration squad of the new year. Remember to stay hydrated out there, folks. What is the master of unlocking? Well, uh, oh, also, you can check us out by going to our website, defcon21.org, and we have a ton of social media, including our Twitter at defcon201nj, as well as we're on Instagram, the host ducks, that social instance of uh, Mastodon, GitHub, all of those. So, uh, welcome to Master of Unlocking. A little bit of a uh, note here what this is. Uh, this is a show where we look at lock systems, physical security. We look at uh, locks, uh, the mechanisms that drive them, how they work. Uh, the ways that they don't work in unintentional ways uh, that that they're not supposed to work which causes exploits which sometimes allows us to get into these uh, devices whether we are using bypassing picking pins wafers what so have you if you ever see someone take two instruments and stick it in the doorknob and move them around in a movie TV show or video game and you're like wow that's some magical mythical thing Hollywood made up it's actually a real thing and that's what we do on the show um, to get some stuff out of the way, first of all, uh, I am a Tool member. This is not a, this is, whole show is not sponsored or endorsed by Tool, although it'd be really nice if they did. Uh, and uh, so there is a rank called Master. I am not considered a master despite the name of the show. I'm kind of like Dr. Phil in that way. No, but for real, I do know how to pick locks. I regularly, uh, before COVID, when people were wiping their butts on each other and coughing on each other, I uh, used to teach us all the time at various um, tool meetups, as well as our DEF CON 201 meetings and just hackery in general. Uh, let's see. You pick any high security? Yes, yeah, so I pick some high security stuff. Um, sometimes some of the high security stuff has really low ends to get into. Uh, and again, as any expert uh, person who's in the physical security world, sometimes you have bad days. There are literally been days where I've seen my mentors get so frustrated that they can't even barely open master lock number threes and they need to take a break. And then there's some days where you're told you're going to be dealing with the hardest lock in the universe and you open it in two seconds. Things happen. It's one of the cool things about this show. Um, not to give them discredit, because uh, I love these folks so much and I've learned so much from them, but when you often see sh shows, I'm just going to name drop a few things here. Uh, lock Picking Lawyer, uh, Lock Noob, who to me is still an underrated favorite out there, uh, Bosnian Bill and stuff. Uh, those videos, because of the nature of what they're covering, are edited. Um, that's not a disservice for them. What they need to achieve 
they edit the videos down. So what's cool about this show, as well as some of the others that you'll see at DEF CON 201 this year, is that if you see a screw up, you get to see what normally is not included in professional videos. So you get to see me like, uh, which you will be seeing me this year, trying to repin stuff and a, a spring launch out and bisects my eyeball or I'm just sitting there. Like, as I say, it's like with programming. There are two different kinds of people who deal with locks. There is I am wizard God almighty. And then there's guy on desert island for 8 million years who after 14 hours of willing away finally managed to create a small fire. And he's like, oh, look what I did oh, after a billion years. So there's all that. Wow, chat's really booming today. Let's see. I'm not surprised that lockpicking is real. I know for sure I've been picking since June. I picked some very, very high security things. Cool. Cool. We can learn together then. Definitely editing and, and multiple takes. Yeah. No, that's the whole thing. Uh, this DEF CON 201, we are not afraid to show failure because it's not if you fail, it's did you learn anything from the fail, even if it's how not to do something. So that's the whole gist of that. But I just want to note that I am not considered with Intool a master, even though I've done a ton of instructions and all of that. Uh, I just like the, the name because as you saw in the opening, I'm a big Resident Evil fan. And so the master of unlocking has been a giant meme in that video game. And one of these days I'm actually going to cover video game locks. I know Lock Noob did a short segment of it, but I want to extensively cover how block picks are not only shown in video games, but in media in general and show some updates to things that like Deviant Olam has covered and things like that. Uh, but I just want to get that out of the way. So like never tell a tool that I'm like a master in terms of their rank. I'm not. This is just the name of the show. It's entertainment. But you are going to learn a lot from here. And the second thing about this is I do my second hydration squad because I dehydrate a lot. No worry, we're going to get into the good stuff really quickly. Um, even though this show is not sponsored by Tool, and in fact, one of the benefits is that you're going to see some company logos that are coming up. I'm not sponsored by any lock manufacturer. I am not sponsored by any lock, uh, lock uh, smith service or repair service or installation service, and I'm not sponsored by any lock picking tool company, even though I have favorites that I like in terms of just individual tools and components, and I, you'll notice soon that I lean to a bit to one side, but you can always hear me explain why. And believe it or not, it's not Peterson. That's like a meme now that everyone uses Peterson. I, I like Peterson's really high quality, I've said this before. Uh, every tool manufacturer has its faults. There's always positives and negatives, so just note about that. But um, even though this is not a tool-sponsored stream, they have two amazing rules. Uh, as I cover the liquid, the liquor up here with my fingers, they have two amazing rules that we always cover on each episode. You, you think that is because it was 2021, we would skip? Nope, we we're doing this every single episode because I don't want to see you folks go to jail or get sued, and I don't want to see me go to jail or get sued for this. So here we go. Uh, first rule: Do not pick any lock that you rely on. You have no idea how many times I have taught lock picking techniques or bypass techniques, single pin picking, things like that. And the first thing they tell me, even though I've already gone over this rule, is like, wow, there's been a thing on my front door. I've wanted to see what that's like. Or I have a lock that I use for my gym locker. Or I want to test my safe where I save my deposits. And I'm like, nah, because you rely on that lock. Uh, not only do you have a risk of breaking the lock mechanism, you also risk breaking your tools. And pretty much every time you pick or bypass a lock, it becomes easier and easier to uh, pick. And again, eventually that lock system breaks down. So all the locks and equipments, and thank you uh, Zen Flash for uh, that follow on uh, Twitch. Don't worry, for Zen Flash, we will get into the bit. I just have to cover legal jargon here and then I'll read a bit of the chat and we'll move on. Um, so you rely on that lock. Uh, don't do that. All the locks mechanisms that you ever see on this episode or in past episodes or future episodes or episodes in other dimensions are literally here for me to practice on to learn and by extension, which is what they're normally for when people aren't vomiting on each other and being like, no mask, uh, and also when police are not running around beating people's face in, uh, are only here to teach you as well as me how to pick. I do not use these locks to secure anything. Uh, I, I don't even, ex I don't use them to even secure a rubber band, okay? That's, they're literally here for training purposes. And the second thing, before it gets too hot in my faux Tim Pool hat, give you a hint, slightly bad haircut, my fault, um, is that do not pick locks that you don't own. Now, 
This sounds like common sense, but we live in the United States. Past 2016, in 2020, there was a lot of things that died. Um, sarcasm uh, died. Uh, irony died. Uh, dignity died completely. And common sense. Those are the four horsemen of... And so... If you walk around after this show or any of these massive unlocking shows and are like, hey, I saw that blah, 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 blah lock on that show. I know exactly how to do that. I have a thing here that will jig it. In. No, don't do that. that that's, that's somewhere else. You don't own that lock, right? So one, you're probably going to be technically trespassing. Two, there's a reason why I put the lock out there. Three, the owner's probably going to get really mad. Four, most in America, a lot of people own firearms that or a baseball bat. That person's not going to be happy. So either way, you're screwed. So if you follow these two rules, do not pick any locks that you rely on, and do not pick any locks that you own, you're golden. You will be, I mean, I'll put it this way, and I'll type this in chat in a moment. There is a section of the tool website that's the Open Organization of Lock Pickers, tool with three O's, T-O-O-O-L. Dot us slash either law or laws. I believe it's laws with an S. If one doesn't work, just try one with an S, one without an S. And it will give a modern listing in the United States only, I might clarify, about all the legal standings. But in general, if you follow those two things, you should be good. Again, all of these locks on this show, I do not rely on to lock to say to lock anything, and I own these locks. I personally went out and bought them, or people have donated them to me because they don't need them anymore. These locks are just here for, as they call it, educational purposes only, and that's that. So are we both good? Okay, just catching up on chat. Uh, uh, Multi-pick or lit for me personally? Believe it or not, I, I've used it seems like multi-pick has good base sets. I've actually never like extensively used anything from multi-pick, uh, but they're one of the more common brands out there, and I've heard great things about them, so good that you find something. Uh, Peterson's actually started to be bad quality now due to their new process of making picks burn. I heard about the burning thing, yes. I saw about that they're like laser cutting uh, their, their government steel, and that's been causing issues. Uh, there's actually, real quick, a more fundamental issue with, and let me just nerd out for a bit before we tilt the camera down, and we go to classic, you know, lock picking hand view. Uh, there's actually, by the way, a reason why in the beginning and the end in certain parts I have it to my face, uh, as opposed to a lot of other lock picking videos. Uh, if you want to know, I'll answer that question later. But with Peterson's, um, again, usually good quality steel stuff, beautiful handles, everyone loves their handle. I want to, I need a handle, man. I don't have an identity unless I have a handle. But um, there's a design flaw I've seen in a lot of them where there's essentially a notch right before it goes into the handle. So it's like you have the pick and then the neck of it and then there's a notch and goes in. And that notch, just because of the nature of how physics work, if you put too much torque on that, it's easier to break than if the neck was just a straight piece of metal, even if it tapered off. Because with that notch, you actually have a focal point now where that's exactly where it's going to break, and thus it makes everything structurally weaker. Again, as I listed, there's some positives about this. All these tools have them, so I just want to put that out. Uh, yep, and their owner has some issues. Dang, I was hoping to get opening my chastity belt. Funny you should mention that, because I actually forgot to put that on the list of... Uh, well, actually, this is a good segue to what this episode's going to be about. So, uh, here's the gist of it. These next two episodes are going to be laid back. Um, I'm once again getting stuff in the mail. Uh, if you haven't noticed, it's really hard to import things from China because Winnie the Pooh and the annoying orange that thankfully will be taken and thrown into the sun soon. I wish we could do that with Winnie the Pooh. Uh, do not get along and have made a bunch of stupid tariffs. And there's a, like, I'll put it this way. There's a bunch of base lock picking tools in China that are absolutely terrible, not even because they're Chinese, because I've seen similar manufacturing methods through different countries. It's basically the cheap way to make lockpicks. There's also some extremely, really good, high-quality tools, and there are some things in locks that are really handy, especially if you're an instructor like me, um, to teach people, and they're only made in China, and yet it takes, I literally, there's a thing I'm going to show here that took forever to get to where I live, and I'll get into that in a moment. Amazing piece of kit from China, by the way. It's like, been like my one of my favorite purchases this year, but because of that's bad. Now, because someone tried to scam an election and thus ruin Christmas, 
everything is like ordering from China. Like even sparrows where I normally rely on like, oh, like literally they're going to show up in five days. Now they don't know when it shows up. So that's why I'm giving sort of a, like I'm going to teach things and show off stuff for this episode and the upcoming episode should be on the 17th of this month. And there's not going to be, even though we have an extra week this month, we're only the first and third Sunday, so February, first Sunday of February. Uh, but um, I figured because I'm going to be ordering a bunch of stuff in chunks that I would give everything time to arrive here. So my thinking is by the time February starts and it's the third episode of this year, I will have everything to start showing off like truly completely new things in terms of being back on schedule. Okay, so that's kind of what we're doing right now, and I'm going to explain a bit what it is. Just want to read uh, uh, if there's any chat updates. Okay, no. So what we're doing today is I, I realized something kind of funny. In fact, I'm actually going to tilt the camera down a moment, re-put some more water in here because we're going to be here for a bit, and then we'll get right into this. Hi, Dissledale Mona. Hey, welcome to the new year. Don't worry. I'm still going to send you the um, game code. I've just been super busy for no reason. So, uh, sometime this week, uh, especially if you already sent me your email, you will get the code. Uh, don't worry about that. I'm not trying to like share documents or something from Russia. Uh, he won a contest thing, and I, I need to reward him. Uh, someone wrote, I don't think China is really a threat besides companies willing to be consulate in human rights abuse. Yeah, no. Basically, what you have, just real quick, to get all the politics out of the way, we have one country that has human rights abuses being yelled at by a country who historically and now has just been nothing but human rights abuses, basically saying as a pot to the kettle, you won black mf -er. That's what's been happening. And we all suffer for it instead of solving the problem, which is human decency. So, <laughs> but we're not learning that today. We're going to be learning lock stuff. So someone said, I love your humor, but I find many people in Locksport community get turned off quickly when politics are brought up. I yeah, no, we, we don't give a shit. Uh, it's the whole thing about like, you know, everyone's like, oh, you know, it's the same thing we have in coding. Uh, by the way, scenario. This used to have, be common a lot in older DEF CON and even parts of Hackers on Planet Earth. You ever go to a convention and there's always something, two things about this person. There's always like, man, why do we have to talk about human rights and like WikiLeaks and all of the, can we just talk about Rust code and Gentoo and Arch Linux and Lisp? And you know those two things. First of all, that person has the worst takes. Like, that's the person you find out where they're like, mm, the age of consent should be lowered to five. And it's like, what? Second of all, I love when people say that and they're wearing my their free Julian Assange shirt and their Kevin Mitnick hat and their EFF sticker and their this laptop fights fascist sticker and this don't tread on me sticker and their, like, um, uh, Aaron Schwartz boots and stuff. And F fuck the NSA in a giant drone copter light. But they don't want anything to be political. Yeah. All right. So a little bit on chat and then we'll get right into the meat of it. Uh -huh, there we go. Just open. Nice. Congratulations, man. Did you yell open when you did that? Because that's like the tradition. You yell open. Even if no one's there, just yell open. You should be good. Uh, plus, I'm glad China's producing anime. Just yes, the Mawa stuff. There's when Chinese people are allowed to be creative, there's amazing stuff. Real quick, if you want to see cool Chinese things, uh, look up the underground art in China. It's phenomenal. Uh, you know, like, if you've heard of Ai Weiwei, he's awesome. That's part of that scene. He's the tip of the iceberg. There's just, there's people who are crazier than him. It's amazing. But we're not here as a just chatting. We're going to be here doing lock stuff. So this is what's going on. Um, way, way back. So a little bit of background, right? Um... So when I was involved with Tool, and I don't want to go into too many details about this, but this needs to be said, I was not originally a member. I just happened to be friends for years with a ton of people in Tool, and even after I learned from them how to pick locks, I still had to deal with the local Tool group. And by the way, Tool New Jersey is amazing, especially now. They're amazing. So it was Tool New York. Most of the Tool stuff, it's the same, you know, it's the same problems you see in most other communities. But honestly, they're just really awesome, especially compared to some other communities I've been in. I'm looking at you, hardcore gamers. Um, so I was dealing with a person who was supposed to be in charge of bringing equipment out. And that person may or may not be said at one point. But it was driving me crazy because I would email them, Hey, we are going to be at this thing. There's going to be a ton of people. You can promote Tool and help us out. Please do this. And then the the second day I'm at the convention, 
That's when this fucker replied to me. So I was like, okay, look, I, I just begun lockpicking. This is like three years ago. I, or two years ago, basically. I was like, I've just begun lockpicking. I'm not an expert like everyone else here, but I'm going crazy because I can't get people. And so I ended up creating what eventually just turned into now the Fuck You Dark Sim kit, which is a portable, and you can hear how heavy it is, portable as in... 1980s laptop computer portable in terms of weight because we're dealing with locks um, training kit that I personally designed and that's where I found my calling I feel like um, in trying to teach people how to pick locks I also have a personal connection that I'll go over real quick where my mom actually came with me to a computer hacker convention and learned lock picking because she also did hey thank you uh, a a trillist? Sorry, it's at a distance, so I can't read like a nitty. Or actually, it might show up on the repeat, so I'll read that. But thank you for following us on Twitch. Um, so this is, uh, here we go. Eight, eight Lessers. Thank you for following us. I hope I didn't screw up your name, Eight Lessers. Um, but thank you for following on Twitch. So uh, my mom learned how to lockpick because she also is a, she was a seamstress. She's not around anymore. She passed. She went on to the great beyond. And she went to the great blue screen of death in the sky in 2016. And she knew how to hand sew. So once she figured out how the lock mechanisms work, she just ate through everything at the tool table. And uh, funny enough, I still have her lockpick set. And so doing this kind of makes me feel connected to my mom. And my mom loved to teach, and I love to teach. And it turns out I'm apparently really good at teaching this. <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to say I'm like the best teacher in the world. Honestly, Lock Noob's video of you got a lock pick set what to do blew me away. I literally have that in like my video. Like if we have to put videos up on how to lock pick in like a loop, I always have that video in there. But apparently I'm good at it. And I'm, I'm, I'm confident enough and not um, imposter syndrome enough to accept that. And so that's how this kit started. And it was going really well. I'd bring this to tool meetings. They th super thumbed up it, especially when I told them what the plan was of me trying to evolve this thing because it's kind of like what Hunter S. Thompson says about the, all the drugs they brought to Vegas and Fear and Loathing, which is once you start, a ser in this case, a serious lockpick training kit, you tend to try to go as far as you can with it. And spoiler, this is only half complete. So I'm hoping by the end of this year it will be 90% plus complete. Uh, but... Um, but yeah, so I bring this there, and I would always bring this to our meetings in person. Then COVID happened, and for some reason, people thought we would only have this for a week. But I used to work in healthcare, and I know that you know Americans basically greet each other by blowing their nose on each other's crotches. And so I'm like, we're gonna get fucked, and we did. Uh, we're still unlocking, and after two months of this thing collecting dust, and I'm learning privately new things myself. I'm like, okay, you know what I'm gonna do. Uh, in May, I was like, you know, let's start doing shows. And one of the first shows after Hackle and Commander was this show, The Master of Unlockings. This is the second oldest show <laughs> in our um, lineup. And so this is a way for me to continue to expand the kit because now I do it for the show. And now I'm still teaching. I'm teaching you all out here. And I get to learn new stuff with you either off camera and a lot of times on camera. And so when I originally had this kit and it was up to a certain level, I did a tour of it, like, you can find the old video, it's like 10 months ago, on our Instagram, and I realized, I don't think I actually gave a full tour of this on the show ever, so what we're going to do today, and I promise I'm going to tilt the camera down now, is we're going to go through the kit, and I'm going to point out what things that I've added, like, what was part of the original stuff, it's very small, and then what got added to fill this thing out. And then we're going to go on a short break, and then I'm going to go over via browser some of, because it doesn't have everything, but some of the stuff I'm going to be ordering in, which should give you hints about future Master of Unlocking episodes. I'm going to read the chat real quick. Do the camera. Uh, damn return springs. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be broken by the end of the night. Broke or broken, because that's both me and my wallet at this point, because, again, lock sport. It, it, it's a cheap hobby when it's not. Uh, I teach some lockpicking stuff as well, mostly high security stuff on the... Oh, the Discord server, yeah. No, I, I'm on that server. I'm just really busy. Um, it's funny because everyone should be getting messages soon of something that I want to actually do with all of you hopefully later this month. So probably after this stream, everyone will get those messages. So 
Not blabbing. I'm going to tilt the camera down. You're going to see some stuff here. And I'm going to quickly, it's going to just give me 30 seconds. I'm going to run off, get more water, come back, and then we're going to go through all of this. So you ready? Here we go. The camera tilt. And one of the first things you'll notice is, thanks to Cirrusel, we have a new table. The old table is actually over here. This one's slightly higher, and I need a slightly bigger, blacker table because that's what she said in order to satisfy you all on the stream. So just give me one moment, and I'll be back with the hydration squad. Not putting music on because I'm literally just pouring water in and coming back. Hi, I'm back. Did the world explode? Nope. Good. So let's see if we can fit this monstrosity on here. Hopefully the table doesn't break. Because honestly, that's what I'm afraid of the most here. Because, again, it's portable. I can walk forever with it. Because I'm like a tool person that's kind of hopeless in which, you know, everyone's moving literally one ton's worth of equipment. That's why I'm going to try to put this down as lightly as I can. Because this thing is heavy. So let's see, I think I actually have to move the rest of this stuff off the table. We will get to those in a moment. Because these are expansions that won't fit in here. And note that I don't truly have everything that I want because, and I will point out, there's like one or two pieces I miss. Um, some of them I actually carry on with me because way later on I'm gonna get a way upgrade to carry on because when you see my actual carry on, you're probably gonna laugh. Although it's taken me far in my journey learning all of this and also helping out people. All right, so this is the kit here. Let's see. Um, I'm a side pocket with DC201 in brackets on the side of the name. Uh, let's see. Snow has taught me a bunch. Oh, cool. It's definitely been a real natural talent at picking, but even more impressive thing to me at conveying the information to new pickers. That, yeah, now I've been told that, so I guess you'll be the judge. Even though we're not going to go any tutorials, this is more of a show and tell on how I present stuff. And you'll notice that I often include a lot of humor in these because I really hate tutorials that are so uh, dry that you literally need WD-40 for them. So let's see. A lock is a lock. Yeah, no, I, I've had those. My favorite, by the way, uh, no, no disrespect to people at Tool, is I have been to a couple of meetings that might have been Tool, might have been not, where they literally read the, um, the PowerPoint, meaning there's no deviation. This is, you know, standard missionary at 8 p.m. levels of reading the goddamn thing. There's no flourishes. There's no any extra tidbits that they might know as experts. And a lot of these people, I, in my opinion, are more knowledgeable than me. But again, there, there's different types of intelligence. A lot of these guys are brilliant pickers. Just because you know how to pick locks doesn't mean you're also good at teaching them. Doing both is extremely rare. So, where do we begin? All right, so some of this stuff got rearranged around a little bit, but uh, first of all, I am using a Husky case. Uh, I love these. These have actually gotten cheaper near me to the point where I need to pick up the second one because the overall goal is by the end of this, hopefully by the end of 2021, if not sooner, there will be two of these. And if you notice these little latches on the side, you can actually stack these and hook them together. And all I need is another one. Well, I'll have a second one here. And... Then this will go into a wheelie thing with a handle that I can drag to our meetings and conventions when we're allowed to meet back physically. Uh, can I explain some stuff? Some stuff is hard to explain. You have to feel it. Yeah, no. Um, <coughs> one of the things I just, I was just hitting puberty there. I'm sorry. One of the things I often explain to people with locks is that a lot of times, no matter how good you are teaching this, when you're explaining this, you feel like you're explaining the Force in Star Wars. You just like start hearing the Force theme, and you're just like, you have to feel, don't look in the lock. You have to feel for it. Use the Force. Reach out there. Don't give in to your anger. Feel that third pin. You know, like it's that sort of bull crap. So, uh, yes, this case is nice. They're really cheap. If I remember correctly, when I bought this case, 
it was like 12 bucks and I think they're now down to eight or nine dollars <laughs> so yeah I'm definitely buying a second one also there's a method to the uh, madness here obviously these husky cases are normally designed to hold small parts so they're designed to hold like nugget stuff which is great because this plastic can take actually a lot of it's cheap takes a lot of beating and you have all these different trays and i can not only organize but just be like you know for example which i will show here oh uh we need to um you know okay i need to take the basic sets out here like i know i can just do that um the final version this one's a bit more of a hodgepodge this case will be rearranged eventually, probably in a couple, like three or four months from now, to just have pin and tumbler locks and their variances. And I'm not going to go into it right now, but I know which pods are going to hold what. And it's not going to change too much. Um, let's see, for, don't forget to tell the pin you want to set in place while waving your hand. Yeah, it's like, you know, these are not the spool pins you're looking for. Um... Also, if you hear random sounds, by the way, did we mention we live in Jersey City? So if you hear like gunshots and sirens and drunk naked people, might be me, might be my roommates, probably definitely the people outside that we're currently, you know, don't feed the pedestrians. So yeah, uh, the gin will feel happy out of milling and happy when milling. Yes, it's magic if you get that Animaniacs reference. Um, I just want to let you know, uh, sometimes with locks, uh, this is what I normally drink. I can do about two shots of this. So I'm not trying to brag. I'm just saying I'm crazy. I, I really shouldn't be alive right now. So, um, <laughs> taking that to hacker cons, it's funny watching people give a sliver of that. Also, it's really good at cleaning some of these locks, and that stuff can revive your markers. That's how strong it is. Anyhow, uh, so this will be rearranged. It'll just be pin tumbler and pin tumbler variants. Um, then the second one are going to be other lock mechanics so as some of these we're gonna point out here it's, so the second one of these will have pin tumbler locks wafer locks including auto wafer locks uh disc detainers just other uncommon lock systems that are not just the base pin and tumbler lock especially in the united states that you see like 92 percent of everywhere um but that's not here or there we will look into some of those future purpose uh purchases let's look in this kit see if I can move it and hopefully this table won't fall over so the original kit super when it started back when it was it's not here but I used to carry it in the ah here it is so I actually this is something I got when I purchased this video game I used to carry everything in here in fact some of the outdated you can see where it dented some of the outdated uh, pits that I don't think are that good for the kit for people to use uh, because no matter how much polishing and here comes a new inset reward uh, I don't think they're suitable because uh, I, I, when we get to the general lockpicks I'll have a description of that but a lot of the extra stuff I still keep in this tin but this whole thing used to fit in here but you know eventually the bigger and blacker the better so if we remove two units from here that we'll get into later and actually this is actually where I'm missing some things. I should probably go back and uh, grab them. Uh, this is, was the entire kit for a while. And in fact, it didn't even have all of these in there. The first thing that we went through is uh, G I, uh, our co-founder, G.I. Jack. Oh, and by the way, if you're new to this show, uh, provided that it's not going to bug out too much, this is the close-up cam. So let's see if I can get you to fo focus. Kind of. Getting there. Yeah, come on. Come on. This is the camera on my phone. This is usually because the other one can't focus very well. It's like me. All right, close enough. Eventually it will decide to focus on its own. So the first thing we did is if you go to Tools website, there's an equipment page. We went and we purchased what is known as a progressive series. Uh, these, I will go through all of them here. I'm just going to get the tool ones out because that's a hint there. Uh, my thumb is dying already. Yeah, no, um, so quick tip that I tell people, because remember, it's just the tip. Wow, what the hell are the neighbors doing? And let's go back to the uh, basic Betty cam here. Is that, um, quick tip here 
is that when you're doing lock sport, you're not on in the field. So uh, there's no rush. Meaning that uh, your hands will eventually cramp, especially if you're doing something that you're unfamiliar with and annoying. So if your hand cramps, stop. Take a break. Go watch some YouTubes. Go on Chatterbait and try not to use your hands. But just take a rest because you can work on this whenever the heck you want. And the more tense and fucked up your hands are, the more likely you're just going to be frustrated in pain and never get the lock open. So it's very important to take breaks occasionally. Uh, you need extremely heavy tension lock. Uh, depends. I know a lot of some high security locks need featherweight tension. I know a lot of them. You use a decent amount to heavy tension. Again, it depends on the lock mechanism. It's one of those things where once you kind of get a hold of tensioning, you kind of get the feel for them. Uh, it's a French push lock with stupid amounts of spring on the core. I'm too lazy to make a reel to... Oh, make. Um, so question, are you, uh, are you using... You're making, so you're using windshield, uh, uh, windshield wiper inserts or using another piece of metal? And uh, I know with a lot of high security locks, a lot of times the best ones are top of the keyways. So you might want to make a top of the keyway variant. And I, and honestly, if it's a point where you need a pry bar, you should probably buy the pry bars unless you need something really specific. The lock he's picking, yes. So um, this is the basic one through six. Now, the thing about these, these are invaluable to an instructor. If you go to when tool meetings resume, but if you went back in time and uh, you were able to attend a tool meeting and then I was probably there talking way too loud and supervising everyone while the actual tool meeting happened, uh, which I do voluntarily, by the way, because they need to do that. Um, just taking out a, my favorite bomb, the Keyway short uh, tension wrench, L wrench with the twist and the standard hook 25 uh, thousandth. Um, Tool will hand out these. They have tons of trays with just the, wow, these got really heavy, of just these. Um, these are known as progressive sets. And the reason why they are known as progressive sets is because you see that number there, the, the number one, hopefully, if it actually, I think it's because there's too much light. Let's see if I can get some shadow here. There we go. So you see that number one right there? Well, that means it has one pin in the front. In fact, if I reach into the tray, if I remembered how to or and I organize this correctly, um, and because I will get into the specifics of this, as you can see, if I take the number one, put the key in, it can open. And if I take the six pinner, they're all keyed the same. So this one key opens and works on all of them. That's how you know that they all work. Yeah, this one's getting a little stiff. I'm gonna have to WD-40 that one later and keep this key out for now. And so what you do is you go down the number. So if you're picking the base two, so you now know how to do two. Joy, welcome to being on the show. Wow, that is the first time that has ever happened. Uh, okay, this is gonna be fun. I'm going to attempt to reach for this and hope that I don't actually unplug something and thus blow out. So if all of a sudden the show disappears, don't worry. Aliens didn't invade or the SWAT team didn't break in. I probably stupidly hit a wire. And part of the problem is that now I can't see. Oh, man, this might be most of the episode. Uh, where the... F where did it... Oh, there it is. Okay, good. It didn't land like super odd. I can feel for it. You know... Another fun thing is I noticed that a lot of people who pick locks, not all of them, my mentors are like this too, is not like this, but a lot of them have ginormous chunk hands with like sausage fingers and they just eat through everything. And I have like, I'm not Donald Trump, but I have very slender, I have girl wrists. There's no real problem with that, but I have really slender, long, I have fingers made out of pipe cleaners. I basically can be Voldemort. Uh, and that is actually where now that was an advantage down there that I was able to essentially slide into the DMs down there and get that out without blowing up anything. So let's see. Uh, RIP, good luck getting that lock. Yes. Do you know what shape you, you need? Okay, cool. So they're helping on chat. Awesome. I'm glad the chat's really engaged here. So 
Uh, as I blab on, and by the way, I'm pretty sure the experienced lockpickers are just listening to me in the background because it's actually also good a lot of times to either be talking to someone or if you can't, just load up a Twitch stream or a YouTube or if you're really old fashioned, some good old idiot box TV. Because a lot of times if you focus too much on picking a lock, you'll go insane. And a lot of times when you're just like half paying attention to it, you'll actually get it open because that allows you to relax. It's the same reason I also know a lot of people who like when they drink, they're better at picking locks and they think it's the alcohol and that's kind of it. What it is, is they need to learn how to relax. Uh, okay. Now, now the chat is grinding. That's just wonderful. So what this basic two here, and by the way, don't do this hand style. I'm just doing this for the camera. So once people get used to picking these two pins, it's progressive. So then they go and now there is three pins that now they have to go through here. And that's why these are called progressive sets. Yep. False set. Something stuck here. I'm actually going to reset this one. There we go. See, another weird thing about this is that I have to pick things at odd angles so I can show you folks at home. So this is not normally how, because the thing is, if I pick the lock like I normally pick locks, you wouldn't be able to see shit. <laughs> Let's see. It's cool that the chat is like having their own mini project during this. That's really awesome. All right, I'm just going to, whoop. Wow, apparently my hands are made out of goddamn butter today. Actually, let's just get out of the close-up camera here for a moment because we don't need that right this second. I just want to pick out, I just want to pick this number three here just because. Because I could go through this entire thing. Probably not going to. Maybe later on at the end of this tour, I'll do that. Yeah. Let's try this again. Ooh, I am sweating like a horse. Not because I'm nervous on the camera. It's literally like we were cooking earlier. And like it's hot in here because it's freezing outside. So yeah. I think I'm, hang on. This is not catching. It's too small. Yeah, it's too small. We must go bigger. Need max comfortness. There we go. Max comf comfort. <laughs> or I might just be having a bad day. This might not just open. What I'm probably doing. There we go. Oh, almost. Let's try that again. It's like... I was probably putting way too much tension on it because, again, I am sweating like a fucking bull right now. I am sweating more than Trump's... I'm sweating more than Rudy Giuliani. Except, you know, my hair doesn't melt, I think. That that whole thing was just truly a, a freaking... You know, you talk about, like, a circus court. That was, like, the little definite... Anyhow, just trust me to know that I've gone through these things because I'm just like, eh, I need to drink something here. But that's how this whole thing works. So you're going through the set here, and what I tell people is once they get down to four pins here, this base four, I then give them a normal mass base master lock to pick, and it's and I'm going to get into in a moment why it's usually these two series. Um, a lot of times when people say base five, but I like to go a step further, and that base five you could do this. But if you're able to successfully multiple times pick base six, I'm now putting you on door locks. <laughs> I'm now putting you on door locks and certain types of locks that I know that have five or six pins or like slightly more high security locks that don't have any security pins in them. Now, I do want to address this weird elephant in the room, which is that tool includes what's known as a base one, which has one pin in the front. You just move that one pin, it goes to the shear line, and it opens. And a lot of people are like, why does Tool do this? Isn't that redundant? Don't you, can't you, you know, should they start off with two because that's more realistic? Well, that would be the case if you're picking by yourself. I might still recommend if you get the tool set to try number one. But yeah, if you were learning by yourself, you'd probably do the base two with the two pins. There's a reason for pin one. And again, some of the stuff in this kit, let's see, imagine if child saw a black ooze coming off his head they would think he's some sort of evil alien yeah now great special effects it it, it uh the thing chapter two was pretty amazing this year right so no 
Um, so let's go to the wide camera again. So the thing about this this base one, right, is that some of the stuff that Tool sells and some of the stuff in here is not necessarily great for if you're at home learning by yourself because of COVID or you're super antisocial or whatever, which is perfectly fine. Some of the stuff in here, especially from Tool, are really good for instructors. And this base one pin is actually pretty much invaluable. I'm gonna tilt this up slightly more. There we go. And here's why. One, really basic thing, once they pick this open, it's an instant endorphin release of, wow, I actually opened something. Two, is that a saying that you'll often hear me when I do instruction, is that you need to learn how to crawl before you know how to walk and walk before you know how to run. The base one allows them one, to learn proper, good, non, or I should say reduced arthritis -y hand positioning. And what's the correct tool? Where to put the correct tool? What's the right amount of tension? How to hold the other tool? Where, how to insert that in? what it feels like moving the pin up and down, what it feels like when it clicks into place, and what it feels like when it rotates. And they learn all of that from just doing the base one. And that's why Tool, in my opinion, sells the base one. It's not for an individual person who has some vague engineering knowledge trying to learn by themselves sitting next to the boiler in the basement. This is for instructors to give to complete new timers and I, I can prove it to you because I know people who even by themselves to start with the base two. When I start people with the base one and that's where I actually, outside of another thing I'm gonna show in a moment, tell them how this works, they instantly get it and they progress through this a lot faster with a lot better understanding than if they started off with the two pins. So I just wanna clarify because there's a lot of progressive kids that are really good and there's another set I'm gonna show off in a moment where they're only two through whatever. So they start off with two pins. And that's perfectly fine because that's design learning by yourself. The This first one is brilliant for instructors and that's why I will always put the base one wherever I go. Uh, let's see, for some people that works though. I also jumped my head first uh, and I also jumped in head first, help me learn quicker. Yes, another thing, and this is something the kit won't solve. People learn, and this is a good segue. Thank you for bringing that up, uh, uh, Atilas RS. I'm just gonna refer to you, if you don't mind, as RS. I, I'm an American and I can't read my own language, so just bear with me. I apologize if I screw up anyone's username. Thank you uh, for that, because the thing also too, whether it's lock picking or creative writing or uh, terminal command lines, uh, crocheting, shooting a ball through a hoop, people learn differently. There's no one correct way, despite what uh, some people say on the internet, I have to say, there's very rarely only one correct way to learn things. And by the way, in my experience, a lot of times when there is one way, it's because the thing you're doing is highly volatile. For example, there is only one way to deal with explosives. The reason is, is because all the other ways will probably end up killing you. Same thing with mixing chemicals, certain chemicals. So yes, <laughs> but most things people learn very differently. Some people... Uh, like given dry instructions and they go through base step by step just reading them and do that some people are very visual and they need to see everything some people are better in conversation and hearing some people need to be hands-on they need something tangible to work with there's so many different ways to teach with this uh, lock sport they call me the midnight philop picker but you can call me Isaac okay cool Isaac hopefully I don't have to sacrifice you to anybody maybe to the demo gods but we'll see and that's exactly why, before we get to the second progressive kit, uh, I have one of these. This was also one of the first purchases um, that I did. This came all the way from China before uh, a lot of the tariffs happened, which means this literally only took two to three weeks to get here, as opposed to something later that I'm still mad at. It was one of the weird, even though I'm so glad I got it, it was one of the worst things. I feel so bad because the company who did it was really nice and up to date. I will go through that story when we get there. But I have one of these. This is a clear padlock. Um, I love this thing so much as a teacher in terms of an instructor instructing students. You can see almost everything in here. You can see the springs. The, the only thing you can't see is unless I turn 
the lock a certain way. You can't see the key pins here, which if I had to pick, I could poke. And um, that rhymed. Uh, and you can't see the interacting. That would be a metal one that you'd have to do slices of, which I will eventually either buy or learn to do that myself. Uh, but I also like that you can see the actuator. You can see the locking poles. You can see all the mechanics in here. What's also nice about this is that they literally designed this to be worse than a master lock. This is quite literally the shittiest lock on the planet. And I love it for that. You can see here with the key how flat the bidding is. I barely have to move any pins to get that open. It, the shackle itself is not ball bearings in terms of its locking parlor. Its mechanism is completely unshielded, which means this is a terrible lock, but this is great for an instructor because I get so many uses out of this guy. Uh, essentially, and you've seen this through multiple episodes, when I try something new, such as showing bi how bypasses work, or single pin picking, or different techniques, this everything works on this lock. Okay, note. This one's not repinnable. You can't open this flap. There are newer ones that have holes drilled in with screws where they put the springs and stuff where they are repinnable. If you go to shop for these and you want one that's repinnable, look for it that specifically says repinnable. Otherwise, it'll just be the standard um, non-repinnable. It's just a solid lock body. You would literally have to destroy this at this point. You'd break the lock in order to repin this thing. At this point, that would be a waste of space. Um, another thing about this lock is that, uh, yes, um, is that, um, let me just hydrate real quick. I love about this lock and this kit. Um, the brain just died. We're sorry. The brain cell you're trying to access is unavailable right now. Please leave a message after the fart. Um, but yeah, no, again, this is easy to also to know. Yes, I remember this. So another thing is I like to bring up this lock too, because I tell people, unless it's really specific circumstances, you are not picking this lock directly. This is literally me for hold, to hold and visually display. So as I can show you here, um, I'm gonna hold this in an odd way. So again, again, we're not teaching tonight. This is show and tell. So don't necessarily hold these and do things if you're new the way I'm doing them. It's not even that I'm such an expert. I literally have to pick this in an odd angle just to show everyone on the camera. Uh, so yeah, like you can see here, if, if I can get close enough to some degree, of like each part moving around. And so when I lot, most of the time when I visually show this as opposed to tools really slow moving, uh, sad 2D MS Paint drawings, it makes people understand why. And actually at this angle, if I can get it to focus correctly and it has enough light, I can actually go into the lock body here and move the key pins up and down. So I tell people like those are the key pins there. But I tell people I'm not gonna let them pick on this for the most part because since it's most, there is metal parts obviously, the shackle, the, uh, the, the, pit, the tumbler core, but the body is mostly plastic, which means this has a very squishy feel. And it also, because everything glides correctly, that's what she likes, um, it makes this honestly easier to pick. Um, this, again, is more accurate. This is a real ass lock. But even the practice ones, these are all solid metal brass. This gives you a better idea, a way better idea of what it's like in there. The only time I let students in person pick this is when they both need to be hands-on and visual and I've seen them do that where I supervise them with it where they go in I show them how to hold it I show them where to put the tensioner and then they go in and they visibly watch while they do it and because now they can correlate what they saw in there to how they feel they can now pick blind those have been some of my fastest most advanced students they usually end up eventually getting farther than I normally do because they can become obsessed. So, um, invaluable, progressive uh, series uh, from different manufacturers. These are the ones from Tool. Uh, also invaluable for me as an instructor is this clear padlock. And you'll notice a theme when I go through this kit, by the way. Uh, let's see. There is a plastic plate that's pressed in place. Yes, I know you can do that, but again, 
really tricky. You damn it, you you risk damaging the entire lock body. That's why honestly, I would prefer to just get a new one that already has the holes in with screws so I can unscrew them and it's designed to be repinnable. Uh, I'm not saying that you can't do a hack like that. I'm just saying that I'd rather just keep this boy the way it is. It does everything that I needed to do. And again, I'm not having people pick this. I'm just demoing different techniques because they all work on this. That's what this is for. Uh, but you are right. You are correct in that you can modify these to be repinnable or, which is to me better, just get repinnable ones. But you'll notice a theme here that I'm going to do. And so I'm going to get this out of the way before we go to any of this other stuff. Um, my goal by the end of this entire kit is here's kind of how I sort of teach people. If there is a lock system, and I can't do this with everything, but I try really hard, and I'm actually mostly way to there, the first thing I'm going to get is a clear and or uh, windowed, so dremeled out so you can view the inside. Basically a, a lock, a practice lock, a visual aid that people can see the inner workings of for a concept, right? Let's change cameras. So I get a clear or one that's dremeled out. I usually just prefer clear because I can show them at all angles. Also, I can vis easily visibly identify this. Um, then I get either a progressive series to train or locks that are trivial to pick with that technique, as long as obviously the correct tools and picks to pick them apart or bypass them. And then I try to get at least one or two intermediary locks, sometimes just for fun, I will on purpose go out of my way to either get a mystery lock or a big pain in the ass lock for people to try on. Because occasionally when I show up to meetings, I get someone who's like, yeah, no, I just do anything. I'm like, here's this thing. Have fun for two hours plus. And that's, that's what happens here. Um, but that's my pattern. I try to get something where I can visibly show the mechanics and to the best of my ability how it works. So I'm not describing abstract concepts or showing like bad pictures it's an actual, like here, you can see it moving and you can feel it and stuff like that. Then I get either, I either make or get a something that is progressive to learn or locks that are the master lock equivalent of that lock type where they're super easy to pick. And then I try to do one or two intermediary, ones that you would most likely see in the real world, one that is a little bit more challenging than the stupid easy one, and then one that will actually give something and or has actual security features in them or on them. Let's see here. Any luck on the... Oh, okay, everyone's keeping up in uh, chat here. Let's see, it's meant to... I'm going to help you out later with this. We're going to get to that. Um, again, uh, by the way, before I get to anything else, if you do like this content and we're only like a third of the way through the tour, you can click that bell, hit like, share, subscribe on Twitch, uh, DLive, YouTube, and recently Facebook, even though it's read-only, we're still working with that. Also, if you are watching this on YouTube through Tor via um, Invitas, you are elite, awesome. But you can click you can click that bell and like, share, subscribe us. As you heard, soon, or heard earlier, I get notifications on the screen for that, and there's also a cool bit. And thank you. Uh, Snow9581 uh, for following us. I very much appreciate that on Twitch, uh, as you can see right there. Uh, sometimes we do charity ones. We actually did one last month where we got to be Hacker Santa with Child's Play. Uh, we are not raising stuff per this show via Tiltify, but we are going to get into a cool fundraising thing because some of my lock... Uh, um, we don't say brothers and sisters. I prefer to use key pins and driver pins. My key, uh, fellow key pins and driver pins wanted me to shout out something, and we'll get to that in the second half. Uh, by a lockpick united uh, and I'm very grateful they contacted me for that and we might do like a you scratch my back I scratch mine even though I just do stuff for cool charity anyhow uh, but we do get alerts for all this stuff and again I also like talking to people in chat again I'm so happy this chat is so lively uh, but if you're just here to learn that's fine as I say keep lurking and keep learning so got that spiel out of the way uh, so that is this clear plastic lock and this that's what I start with that was the just ignore this guy this, this was the whole thing besides my own personal lock picks and some other ones that we'll get to. That's the whole thing that was originally here. Then we ran into a problem where after a while, instead of having, oh, I know, like six to eight people at our meetings, we would have like 14 to 16 people. So if you have someone who's on like the basic number three, and now they want to try the basic number four. Someone else has a number four. They have to wait to that person. To, and so I have to be, inside joke, more progressive. So that's where these all came from. 
I keep them in the same because it's two different companies, but I keep them via the amount of pins. This is going to be fun. I also have this weird art of not only displaying. Uh, I'm not doing the best job right Actually, here's a better idea. I'm not doing the best job right now, but like I'm so used to setting up convention tables that I apparently also, besides teaching, my other two good skills are displaying uh, lock stuff in a very visually pleasing make and like accessible and engaging manner. And apparently I'm also really good at taking pictures of locks and lock picks like they're like, you know, high quality gourmet food or something like that. It's kind of weird, but it's true. Ah, oh, this is where this guy went. Okay, that makes sense. It's been a while since I looked in this bin. So this, these are also progressive locks. So they are mo these are modified pin tumbler cores and you can also repin them if you wish. We'll probably get into that this year, not these, but repinning in the future. Um, similar to the ones via tools. So we have an interesting compare and contrast. Both of these are really good, by the way. Uh, let's see, gonna see what else I can do at hand, maybe. Uh, cool, w, WSW as well. Um, remember to take breaks and hydrate like I'm doing. So both of these are good. And like I said, with different tools um, and equipment, they have their plus and minuses. Um, I will be very blunt. The ones for Tool are not cheap. They are, not that these aren't good quality. These are good quality. These are, in my opinion, best quality. And that's not because I'm a Tool member. You get what you pay for. These are handcrafted by Tool members. <laughs> they are engineered for that. All you have to do is actually just stick the stickers on them and you're good. Uh, let's see, Primus in the hands, really cool. A really cool skill that shows a higher level. Uh, of picking yeah in hand uh, we do most of the stuff by the way on the show in hand at least we try to uh, actually a vice that won't break this table is something I'm working on um, but there's some interesting differences that you wouldn't think would change too much but it is kind of fascinating so as I mentioned before there's one key for the tool set and no matter how many pins there are whether it's this one pin this four pin God, I have to oil some of these because these pickers really go to town on these. Or six pin. Yeah, I have to oil some of these. <laughs> this key, this very flat bitted key on purpose, works with all of them. Now, if you're unfamiliar with these, these are from Close Up Cam Lock Pick Extreme. I I think they're such a severely underrated company. We covered them on, I think it maybe was either episode six or eight, maybe, but we covered them in a, a previous episode last year where we talked about um, different lock sport groups. And Lockpick Extreme uh, is, they're, they're a mixed group of people, but they are primarily founded and run by lock sporters who just happen to be women or self-identify as women or female. And you'll often catch them, they do a bunch of business things. You'll also, they're probably most well known for doing all the lock picking for the Dia Initiative. Uh, a lot of the lock picking, like villages that you see at cons and conventions and professional trades are done, ooh, that's a good zoom, uh, are done by lock, uh, are done by tool. Um, Dia Initiative, just because I guess, tries to partner up with Lock Pick Extreme. And they're really good. I heard their instructions are really good. And Bosnia and Bill recently reviewed their main tool set, which I like because they're also color coded. And again, I think they're so underrated. It, it boggles my mind that Lockpick Extreme does not come up as all. You know, we hear of you know Tool and Peterson and Lockpick United and Sparrows and things, but I feel like Lockpick Extreme deserves a lot of credit. And here's something kind of awesome and genius, right? Is that these keys you'll notice that unlike this one which was just one key in blank each of these has their own key and they have two sets just in case you lose one so let's take a look here this is the two pins so in addition to having two pins let's look at this key 
This key is some of the flat bidding. And note, they actually did a full bidding on this. So it's not like they did like the first two here and then gave up. They did a full bidding. And in fact, if I put tools universal key for their progressive series next to it, you probably notice that, and I'll get a black background in a moment, that these two keys are so flatly designed that they are not that they are very similar to each other in terms of their flatness. They're like the flat Stanley keys. This upper key here is the tool one that works on all the, the progressive locks. This one only works in the number two. Remember, they're each individually keyed. And this is why this is fascinating, because this is only something someone who's been doing locks for at least a decent amount of time will know. So that was the number two. Let's look at the final one, the number six. So in addition to having six pins, there's no security in here, it's just pins. Let's see if I can take this guy out because it seems a little worn out here. There we go. Yep, hang on. Oh, that's why, shoot. I must have put these together drunk and put the wrong key somewhere. It's gonna be one of these. It's three, isn't it? No? Hmm. Wait, is this one? This is one too stiff. Hang on. Ah, got really stiff. That's why. Okay, so this is the right key. Uh, I, I just need to really WD 40 these. But yeah, so for comparison, um, let's get that bucket. This top one here is the bidding for that two pin uh, lockpick extreme practice tumbler. Note how very flat the bidding is, right? This is the number six at the bottom here. You'll notice the pinning, the bidding here is a bunch of high, low peak valleys. So in addition to increasing the pins, the difficulty in the range of bidding also increases. So for example, you'll notice here when I bring out a multitasking here in my hands, the three pinner, and we'll put it next to the two pinner here, if I can grip this properly. There we go. You'll notice that while the three pin one down here is still more flat, you'll notice it peaks in valleys more compared to this upper two pinner one. And it keeps going in variances until you get to that six pin one that's just up and down and all around Sonic Adventure. And that's important because you could argue and I would argue this, and this is not a fault of tool. There's a specific reason why I believe they key everything with the same flat key, because it's way easier for the instructor to just worry about this one key instead of every instead of me going around, which I do, trying to make, and you saw earlier, I got confused, trying to make sure each key fits these different uh, tumblers for Lockpick Extreme. So this is just easier for the instructor. But what this does with the Lockpick Extreme uh, progressive sets is that in addition to the pin difficulty increasing, the frequency of the bidding also increases. And as anyone knows with more advanced stuff, doing things like the high-low high pinning, so pins in the front are high, uh, then uh, are high up, and the pins in the middle are low, and then the pins in the back are high, or doing the low high low, where the pins are low in the front, pins are high in the middle, and the pins like something like that, or some variation or two where both if you have enough pins, um, that will uh, make it more difficult to pick because now you have to actively reach around pins and you risk uh, accidentally dropping, re resetting, or oversetting the previous pins you properly set, making the lock more difficult to pick. So just simply varying the bidding does uh, make increases the difficulty of the lock. Not usually significantly, but especially when compared with other security features, that will throw a monkey wrench into everything. This also confuses people with tensioning. So you can make the argument that even for a beginner set, and these are both excellent for beginners, and note that also the Lockpick Extreme does not come with the one pin that's exclusive so far as I've ever seen for tools pinning set, which is why I think this is worth it alone and probably should be your first set if you're an instructor particularly, that I would argue that the Lockpick Extreme progressive set is overall technically more harder to pick than these base ones. Because if you have good muscle memory, even subconsciously, and like if you get to the number three, 
these first two ones are set exactly the same as the number three because they're all keyed the same way. So if you get to number six and you've already picked apart multiple times number five, you can just quickly set all of those pins in the um, binding order in six and then find that one that's off and there you go. With these, you have to deal with the, their different bidding. So each one is unique and different and it's a special little snowflake. Both of these are great. I mainly got these because also, by the way, these are cheaper. To put it in perspective, when I initially got these, this was 80 bucks. The Lockpick Extreme, 40 bucks, and that does not include the shipping. So they literally were half price. I think there's even a slight bigger gap now between the two. Spoiler alert, the tool ones got more expensive, but again, they're higher quality, and you get that first pin one, and they're just simply done with one key. So I got these because just we had too many people. Before COVID happened, we started getting meetings where like 30 plus people would show up, which means, which is true, I'm either gonna get probably either another set of lockpick extremes or two sets of something I'm going to show on the cam later. Uh, but these are great for beginners and they each have their pros and cons. I found the tool ones more, slightly more higher quality, um, easier to for the instructor because it's the one key. And these are super awesome for basic and this base one pin, invaluable when teaching people how to do correct, how to do correct everything before they actually tackle aggressively picking by themselves. The Lockpick Extreme, also really good, and I love how each key is individualized with its bidding, so you're also learning how to pick around more difficult bidding, so the bidding progresses in difficulty, in addition to the amount of pins, which I think is more realistic and has its own training technique. Otherwise, I don't regret these. These were those first two tins, and the reason I bring them up is because these other tins are gonna go away faster. So also you get to watch me put these away a bit. So if I remember correctly, this is how you do tools. It's, I divide them by three because it's even, it makes it simple, and I put the base key in the first one. And then because of the way Lockpick Extreme is, I do the first two in the first one, two, three, and then I do four, five, and I do four, five, and six in the four, five, and six. And also we're just gonna move these two folks back to where they originally were, including this one, which we are going to get to, but I just wanted to get this out of the way. So this one, Ignore this for now because I right look right now I have no place to actually really put it so I just dumped it in here. But this was the second thing I expanded with. So these this bin is the next area of advancing your skill. And there's two very important things in here. One which to which as far as I can tell is exclusive to tool is these they look very similar to the progressive sets, right? But you'll notice there's only four of them. Also, the higher level ones have just like blue to purple stripes. Why do all of these uniformly have red stripes on them? Is it because they're a Jamaican beer? Please like and subscribe to, to, to because that lame joke was awesome. These are progressive locks, correct with that, but these had spool pins. Um, yeah, well, what are you asking how long you've been at this art form? Are you talking about snow or are you talking about uh, myself? Just clarify in chat. It could be both because I can answer that question as well. Again, if anyone has any questions about what I'm doing or what I'm going and need me to explain or if I'm too loud or too soft in my words or whatever, you want to shout out something that's appropriate, um, do so in chat. I love talking to people in the chat. Otherwise, keep lurking and keep learning. Oh, and Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Robin A. Interesting spelling of Robin. I actually appreciate that spelling. So yeah, words are good. Yes. Thing we learned in 2021, words are good. You know what's going to be neat about Donald Trump winning, no matter your political position? We will actually have words strung together in sentences. It'll be beautiful. I, you know, I thought I wouldn't have to see that again since, you know, George W. Bush and Bill Clinton, but apparently, you know, we like to be retro here. I'm glad that's over. So, these are the same progressiveness as the other progressive locks, the, the progressive tumblers, but these have spool pins. And so I get to teach people the tensioning and tool techniques to uh, defeat spools. I'm not going to go into them now, I just want to show that off. In addition, 
which uh, this kind of sat in limbo for a bit. People did use them. I'd wait to people that really used to these after usually a meeting or two, and then I would teach these spools. And eventually, I also plan to get another set of these four uh, progressive spool pin tumblers. But what was also invaluable is these two guys from Sparrow, in which I'm going to bring up the close-up again. Let me see which one is which. Here we go. So first of all, I love these lock bodies because they very much mimic an actual lock body from a normal lock, which means that unlike these pin tumbler cores where they're 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 actually the that's if you Dremel a master lock number three open, this is basically what they look like. I could show that actually a bit later if I, I can borrow the screw the community screwdriver. But you'll notice that like you know I put a tension wrench in here and crap like that. This is this is annoying. This is like. You know, this is like typing with keys that are nanometers wide, like this cramps your hands. Uh, eventually, I would actually like to get um, cases, uh, 3D printed cases that are more shaped like this to hold things better. This is more of a solid lock body, so when I take kind of the really groovy, uh, here it's orientated. Uh, when I take the groovy key out, if it wants to come out, come on, baby. Come on, you can do it. Schlage, I believe in you. Yeah, this is kind of a cool key. I like how it's rounded out here. But yeah, like, you know, you put your tension wrench in this one and hold it. This is way more comfortable and this feels more like a lock. And in fact, which we'll look at later, they sell progressive sets in this style. This is probably, I'm probably gonna get two sets of the progressive ones, but we'll get to that when, after we go on break and we're like, we'll eat through this really fast, by the way, uh, this segment. Um, but yeah, it's way more comfortable, a lot more realistic to hold, things like that, really great. But why I primarily got these guys is because they are dremeled out and if you can see in here those are the spool pins I can do that I can push them around so you can see them in there so there's they now make clear locks with uh, spool with security pins in them but they weren't available at the time and regardless I prefer in this case the dremel over the spool and sometimes I teach, I have people pick this, but again, just like with the clear lock, this is to me to show, because I, I used to have to like imagine what it looks like inside, and this is a picture of a spool. Now I can go in and being like, you don't have to imagine it. You can see them here, and you can see when you look at the uh, clear lock how those driver pins are way different than those, the, the driver pins at the top here are way different than these, because that's what the spool pin is, and I get to go around and show how it works. Funny you bring up the reload kit, because we're going to get to that in a moment. And... Even though, sadly, there's no progressive sets for this, which means I have to make one, I also got the same one dremeled out. Ah, come on. Come on, Schlag, you can do this. Schlag. Got the same one with serrated pins in them. So I can show people how those work as well, just like the clear lock. So again, you're noticing the pattern here. We, when we went from basic pin tumbler, no security, had clear lock, that showed the innards and all just overall how locks work. And then we had a progressive set. When we got to higher security with these spools, got the spool progressive set, and I also got a spool and a bonus um, serrated that had dremeled out so you can see what's going on. It's the same teaching technique. I show what it looks like inside. I move it around. I let them touch that. I describe the technique. I show the technique. I put them on the first one, the easy one, and then I ramp them up until by near the end, now they got the concept. That is my teaching method. Now, again, I adjust if, you know, if someone's more visually oriented or they just want to try this out on their own after I give them a little briefing or they need to be hands-on with it or, or they're very audio oriented or video oriented but that's the overall technique that I use and you'll see even though I'm still half ass with some of these very little variancy in this because that's the core technique um, oh I'm sorry I apologize if I misgendered you uh, thank you uh, Robin uh, thank you uh, again I that's why I don't normally say ladies and gentlemen on our on, on, on my shows uh, for uh, Master of Unlocking, I say key pins and driver pins. And on my other show, Crypto Barons, which I'll explain at the end of the episode, I say, uh, was it uh, Genesis, uh, uh, blocks and hashes? So that's why I kind of do it. I'm just reading chat. And here comes the new incent reward in 28 seconds. The incent reward, by the way, if you don't know, uh, is not a scam. Uh, we think this is kind of cool. We started this in one of the past Crypto Barons episodes and just kept it up here. You go to get.incent.com. So as you watch, you'll see these. There'll be a QR code as well as like a typed out code. If you type that code 
or scan the QR code in the Incent wallet, you get a little bit of the Incent crypto tokens, and then that builds up as you keep watching our stream, and then you can eventually cash it out for actual money or exchange it for another cryptocurrency. So basically, you get free money by watching our show. It's pretty neat. Happy New Year, Delsa Del Nona, by the way. So I'm just catching up with chat before I move on because we've just covered most of this row. Uh, let's see, lock picking, have to. Um, I don't know who you're referring to, but I'll say how long I've been this. I've now officially been doing this for four years. So that's another thing I want to point out because even though I don't say I'm a master at this, a lot of people are blown away not only how I speak but and how I teach this, but what I know of. Uh, even though there's a lot more advanced things and there's things I haven't encountered yet that I'm currently learning and either in process of learning or eventually going to learn. And that's important because... I went literally from not knowing the difference between a master lock number three and an eggplant to being able to professionally teach this in less than three years. So as I always say, if a giant moron like me can figure out how this works and, and succeed at this, everyone else is better than me, you can too. Just putting that out there. Um, We're not going to focus on this one yet. This is naughty. I will put this over here for now. Yep, four years from now. Also to note, uh, Robin, uh, like I said, if you like this, what you see here, you can like, share, subscribe on Twitch, DLive, and yes, enthusiasm. I use that to make up for other things. Uh, but uh, <laughs> just kidding, maybe. Uh, but no, um, you can follow us on, on uh, Twitch, DLive, YouTube, or Facebook, which is what we're currently broadcasting from. If you also send us, uh, I believe it's bits on Twitch, Super Chats on YouTube or Lemons. We also get notifications for those. And we actually do use the Lemons on this show. Uh, we don't cash them out. We do a cool thing with Crypto Barons and sometimes our main meets. It's really fun. I'm just going to read the chat. I went from nothing to opening Asa Twins in 2.5 months. Uh, dedication, and you can learn things pretty fast. Um, not just dedication, but I know people who were taught this before and were either taught by, and I'm going to be blunt, either incompetent instructors or... Um, and it's not because they didn't know how to pick locks, the instructor. It's just a big difference, again, between knowing how to pick locks good and teaching people how to do this. Very different stuff. There's almost zero overlap between them, like, for real. There's, like, two separate categories. You have to master both in order to kind of do this. Maybe more, in my case, the education part more than the picking part, although I'm getting there. Um, but they either were taught by bad instructors who didn't know how to instruct well, or were taught in a way where in their field, yes, this would work, but in terms of this, especially in beginners, no. <laughs> and we can get into that in a moment, but I really want to eat through this. I'll actually circle around to that later. And then I teach them, and they get it. So I know people who have been doing this for months, but just because either they're stuck on something and they can't find the answer for it, it's usually something really basic that I'm like, why is there no post on this? Uh, or they couldn't just find the information because they're using Bing and the search engine sucks. There's no video on it or just bad instructing or whatever. And then I teach them how to do it or point them in the right direction because what's really important with locks, you're, you know, I will put it this way again. Love lock picking lawyer, but there's a thing that happens within lock sport where people think, and this is a trap that you can fall into, that it's just, oh, it's knowing literally. And maybe this works with bypasses. Let's put it that way. Works with bypass techniques. And even then, there's still a technique. That's the key. Lock sport, there's tools that you use, but there's a technique. So it's not just enough, you know, it's like what they say about the blues or jazz or metal music or whatever. It's not enough, or rap. It's not enough that you know what lyrics or what notes to play. You need to know why they need to be played. So you, you can't just have a tension wrench and a pick and go nuts most of the time. You need to know why these tools are designed this way how they work, why they're made this way, how to not use, how to use them correctly, how to not use them correctly, how to experiment, etc. So it's kind of like any other thing. Having good tools is important. I'm not going to say that, but even more important because there'll be a point where you have good tools. You can go out and just buy the best Peterson thing in the on the planet. You will get stuck. And one, that's normal, but two, it's because now you've reached a point where the tools don't matter as much and it's all technique or as um or mostly technique or as uh they said in fear and loathing las vegas we keep circling back to this story about the kentucky derby now it is no longer a race now it's an endurance contest 
there's a point with lock picking, and it happens very fast early on, where you have decent tools. You will be able to open 90% plus of everything you'll pretty much contact with. So now it's honing in on your technique. And part of that technique, which is the hardest thing to teach, is a methodology of, I have no idea how this works. How do I find out how this works and exploit it? That's really important to go in blind and to like have a scientific method, like the scientific method of a tackling a unknown lock or a lock unknown to you and you can't just wiki it. That's very important. So let's continue on with uh, some of this stuff. I'm just gonna um, read the chat real quick. Um, do you offer courses on being a locksmith? No. Um, I Even though I know certain locksmithing techniques and I'm still learning more about it, no, for two reasons. One, I am not a licensed locksmith. Uh, there's actual licensing for that. Two, this is a hobby that I also find really useful in my personal life for multiple reasons and not for any actual illegal reasons, shockingly enough, which again, I don't condone, do not pick locks that you rely on, do not pick locks that you don't own. Dead serious. I will admit I have broken those two in very specific circumstances because of my experience and these were literal emergencies like the cat is gonna die in the apartment emergencies the a fire broke out and we all need to leave emergencies I don't recommend especially if you're new to do that it's it's like the same way and this is the last analogy I'm gonna use before we go back to this a good jazz like a good piano player will know how to play poorly like they can actually play poorly on purpose that's actually a sign of being good at what you do that helps with the imposter syndrome i i know when and where to do this because of my experience and i still don't recommend doing that so just follow do not pick locks that you don't rely on do not pick locks that you rely on and do not pick locks that you don't own i do that all the time works for me uh someone said could open locks because of luck but was humbled when i tried to be more deliberate yes there's a big uh a lot of times you do this by luck going real back to the basic pin set and i would do this with any of these when someone's like awesome like oh my god i picked the number three awesome do it again okay i picked it again cool do it one more time i make them do it in three to five times once they get comfortable with that to the point where they can just basically muscle memory it then i put them on the next one because another goal with these kit, and you'll notice that, I, I hopefully I don't point out, but probably people more experienced with me will notice this with the stuff I'm showing off and what I'm saying, is that I'm here to help learn, help people learn, including myself, how to pick locks, plural, in general. I did, and I'm not teaching you how to specifically pick master lock number threes. I'm not specifically teaching you how to pick. You know, American Lock 700 series or Asa Owlboys or things like that. I'm here to teach you how to pick locks because it's really easy. And I've fallen victim to this myself to be picking on a, a similar type of lock forever and then you get comfortable and then you get an ego and then you encounter a lock and you don't have a good methodology and now all of a sudden you're back to being in noob mode again. But again, it's fine. We all make mistakes and stuff. But that's a whole big thing there. Uh, so is that the case that it's probably just faster to just break your way uh, in and out? Yes, but there's pro to cons for that. For example, uh, do you want to uh, put it this way, right? You want to save the cat, but you also don't want to break the door lock because replacing the door lock will actually be expensive and would take forever. There's a scenario. You want to preserve the lock. You don't want to be super loud as fuck. <laughs> To disturb other people you want to check to see you're not trying to pick to get in here's a common thing that's actually a lot of people use this for you want to know if the lock that you bought is going to work or if it's broken that's a way to find out too um I had to figure out new stuff yeah picking high pin counts yeah, I mean, the number of pins will do that. And again, it's usually not one thing. It's multiple factors. It's not because there's a certain amount of pins or there are security pins or there is a bidding. It's usually a combination of those. Like, it's usually like it's six pins and has a high, low, high. And it's just this ungodly mix of spool and mushroom, uh, sorry, mushroom and, and serrated pins. That's what makes your asshole clench. <laughs> so anyhow, let's go back to going through here. 
So, as I said, when they're used to these progressive sets, I then start introducing them to real ass loves. And the ones that I prefer to teach people once they get to four pins is what I call my tiny brass boys, otherwise professionally known as the Master Lock 140 and or 120. These just all happen to be 140s. Uh, the reason why I know it's a 140 is because, <laughs> not to mention its design, but the number, let's see if I can get the right side up, 140, I don't know if you can see this, is actually etched into the lock body here. But there's also like this type of like wedge design, type of uh, hardened shackle. These tiny brass boys, these are Master Lock 140s in this particular, but 120, 140. Uh, these are Master Lock number threes, part, look, partly because they actually say uh, number three on the lock and also just this design. Like another reason why I get these, not only are they easy to pick for beginners as uh, something goes crazy right now, so just ignore the screaming people, but okay, this is awkward, but um, these locks and a lot of these locks in my kit, I get at local department stores. I don't order these online. This is actually the trap that you can run into when ordering a lot of high security locks or locks in general off the internet, is that a lot of times people go for the more flashier lock or the one that's like pure lock sport. But again, I'm trying to teach people how to pick locks and particularly how to pick locks that they're probably gonna run across. So if you've ever been to a department store or you just walked around your town, you probably saw a shit ton of these two types of locks. And that's why I have them in my kit. It's not just because they're easy, you run into these all the time. Let's see it. 15 pins in three rows. Yes, there's a new, there's kind of a new things with putting on rows. Uh, well, if the cat ends up dying, at least you preserve the lock. Yes, exactly. We can trade that in. But no, it worked out. Um, it's not that the cat's dying. It's just, you know, it's illegal. It's, you know, you're in, you keep a pet in an enclosed space that you can't actually access or open. Uh, I don't want to go into too many more details on that, but here we go. So that's why I have these. And here's kind of what's also really funny to me, too, about these two particular types, by the way. And by the way, you can also get these in bulk. I actually have to get more of these because I've lost one or two of them over the years, so I'm probably going to get another set of both of these types. And they'll look different. That's how I'll know the difference because it's nice to also just have visual variety. Funny enough, so this one has an actual spool pin in it, but you wouldn't notice because of how bad, I'm not going to grab the key, but how bad the bidding is for these. Uh, simply because um, these I actually got before I got the progressive kits because they were still in the mail. These I took to Liberty Science Center. These I taught literal five-year-olds how to pick with zero problems with any of them. That's how trivial these are. I'll just, now, provided that it doesn't want to be grumpy, I will actually show you this on. And so that my hands are continually made out of butter tonight, I will show this to you on air. Just, you know, I know this is kind of trivial, but, you know, we like trivial things on this show. I also like trivia. There we go. See, there already did it. It's probably more muscle memory than anything at this point. I kind of forgot how it was, but yeah. Uh, the key to these two types of master locks is that they both have four pins, and I also teach people the technique on, which I could show if you folks want to know, let me know in chat, how you find out how many pins there are in a lock, because there's a specific really fast, easy, cool way to do so without having to look up what the lock is. Um, again, methodology, you can use that on pretty much any lock. Um, but yeah, the key to these is that they have four pins, just like the four pin progressive one, and their bidding is incredibly flat. They are so flat that basically, for the most part, when you tension the core, two of the pins are already in place to open the lock. You just usually have to move two pins. If you get a really defective one, it's only one pin to open the whole thing. And that's what makes these easy. And these are actual real world locks they use. Now, what I find also fascinating, or we'll get back to the 140, is how the master lock number three, well, first of all, as I tell people, there's these little, uh, what do you call it, um, rivets. So I tell people when they're new, so when they insert the tension wrench, only insert it halfway so it leaves some clearance space to go over these um, rivets. And the second thing I tell people is I'm like, okay, remember the tension? And I also describe to people, I'm not going to do this on air, like what featherweight tension is because that's, that's the most difficult thing is trying to describe 
what tensions are because everyone has their own idea of what tensions are and we don't have a we can't be like oh you put 7.5 tension like or newtons like nobody knows um so i tell people you know the amount of tension that you did on that then the brass boy put a little very slightly a little bit more and that's the amount of tension you're going to do here because what i find fascinating provided this one wants to cooperate with me or not is how much these stump people and I shouldn't be too surprised because believe it or not when I started picking it took me like a month before I actually picked a master lock number three open now I could argue that it's not because I'm stupid but it's probably because I was stupid but yeah uh, just to again show you that we all start from somewhere and the whole point is not try it is not a race not trying to wave your non-existent dick around it's we all want to get to the finish line so I don't care if it takes you days hours seconds or years this one wants to be uncooperative actually let me just relax slightly but I actually feel it's a little gummy I'm gonna try a different one here I also could just be having a bad day because, again, everything's slipping out of my hands. Um, but, uh, you know, my whole thing is to get everyone, like, decent to good so that they can start the same journey that I started four years ago. I also might try a different tensioner later. There we go. Yeah, the other one I need to WD-40. I need to, so New Year's resolution, I need to go and WD-40 all these locks tomorrow. <laughs> now, one last thing before we move on with this. So it's a light tension is the tension it takes to hold. Yes, uh, there's actually multiple descriptions I use for that. One, uh, if I have to verbally describe it, it's you take a piece of paper and you put your finger on it and how much it is the bare minimum to hold that piece of paper to that wall, that's the tension. Um, for people who are visual, it's when you put the tension in, and you push down on it, the core should slightly rotate. When, when you put it, when it rotates, and it's rotating when you push down, and it stops, stop too. That's the amount of tension you use. And then when I'm in person a lot of times, when I'm like featherweight tension or medium tension, I'm like, if I have permission to touch you, it's that. Again, people learn in different ways. And of course, I've had to use the, the piece of paper description because I'm teaching you through the internet. And that's actually where I've had to learn like, you know, how do I place these cameras? I originally only had this camera, which was terrible for up close stuff, which is why I have my phone camera as the close up camera now with two cameras, basically. The lighting, which I'm still working on, things like that. Again, I'm learning with everyone else. I'm basically learning new teaching techniques. But here's the other crazy thing. So you remember before, and I'll give you a refresher how long it took for this Master Lock 140 to just open. I'm gonna give you a fun piece of trivia if you don't know about this, because this is the thing that keeps me, lockpicking lawyer, and deviant olum specifically up at night. See, I don't know if you timed it. You see how fast that was? When you go, and I'm not going to go into too much detail, and I'm not going to give my background on this, not because it's bad, but I just want to just do that because otherwise we'd be here forever. When you go either in person to firearm stores or especially online, and you look at the top locks for guns, whether you're preventing, you're blocking the loop to prevent the bolt from actuating, or to actually put this on the box that the gun's in, this is the not only the most common lock people use to secure their firearms, this is also the one that gun manufacturers, lock manufacturers, gun stores, and politics recommend to secure your guns from being stolen and used against you. This thing, this thing, the thing that I've taught five-year-olds to open, the thing that it probably is not gonna do this now and I'm in the wrong hand position. This bastard. So just keep that in mind. Again, really common lock. So those are some of the real world locks. Now I'm taking some other things out in preparation because we're about to get to those in a moment. And this one I'm gonna do super later. I'm gonna put these two back in their casing. Yeah, in this order. We're gonna get the picks in a moment. Uh, I just wanna, yeah, just check and chat. 
So, uh, now we're going to get into variancies of pin and tumblers themselves. The first one that I got was this. Now, this is kind of fascinating because this has four pins in it. It has low bidding. So you're just thinking, oh, it's just basically one of these. And you can I've been able to open these in like less than five seconds. This should be very similar. This thing took me forever. I actually had to go to my mentor. And by the way, the one of the people, one of my main mentor that I go for advice on is my extremely longtime good friend. It's not a bragging thing. I just think he's so underappreciated, honestly, in the lock world. Night Owl, who operates in New York City, which is what we're near because we're in New Jersey, and particularly Jersey City in Hudson County. And... Uh, and I've been friends of him way longer before I ever got involved in lock picking or tool. What's the good one of these? Here we go. And he was basically telling me I had the right techniques, I had the wrong tools. Now I'm not going to fully do this on camera. Basically, one pry bar, and even without pry bar, top of the keyway tension on this guy. One because basically the problem is the lock core here is super tiny. So. My 25 thousandths of an inch and my 25 thousandths of an inch um, tension wrench, I can actually put that in here. Let just take the normal tension wrench, stick that guy in here. There's two problems with this tension wrench. I'm listing one. And then with this, I have no room to, I barely have any room to maneuver. The other problem with this, as opposed to a pry bar, making sure we're still connecting the internet, okay, is that. I'm going to try to find the key because it should still be in here. Because there's something kind of ridiculous about this goddamn key. And that is. Yep. Is that listen to me turning the lock open and pay attention to this sh um, shackle. You hear that? I'm going to put this next to the microphone. It sounds like a prison shackle, doesn't it? This thing needs a lot of tension once it's picked open to then pry open. And a lot of times these bo normal bottom of the keyway tensioners don't cut it. So it would eventually end up working for me, which is why I have these on my personal kit, and eventually I'm going to get a bunch for the training kit itself, is I have the pry bar that's on top of the keyway, so that way I have a lot of room. And then what I eventually got, which is, again, upping security here, and you'll need this for more high security stuff, is a 15 thousandths of an inch pick. So I can actually go in and have enough space to move these pins out of the way, and this is also how I learned top of the keyway, sorry, uh, top of the keyway tensioning while you're, you know, while you're picking because it's its own thing, especially with that first pin in the front. And then I had enough strength in here to pry this thing open because I have to pry a lot of tension in order to open it. So that to me was the next thing up. So this is a good example of four pins, no security pins, but because of the nature of the lock and how it's designed, we'll get to this guy later. Um, that, that was the next thing I put in there. So before I get to the actual next thing, I want to show you the thing that came after that. Now we're going to get into, we've covered a lot of pin tumbler stuff. Now we're going to get into, and we're over halfway done, variants. And eventually, these variants will be moved out of this case and be put in the new case as its own little tray for that variant. But for now, because I only have this one, and I don't have the other pieces yet, those will be coming in the next two months, and that will justify the new cheaper case that will go in addition to this case. I have them in these two bins. And the first one is this lock, which, you know, it looks very similar. This is uh, actually, it's more correctly, an RV coupler that some people also use to secure fences for some reason. These look kind of similar to each other. It seems like same brass body and everything. But when you look at the keyholes, you'll notice that one looks like a normal pin tumble keyhole. What the hell is this? This is just a slot with two grooves. Like, you know, not to dis, not to list the poor gal, but like, you know, what, what's going on here? And if you look in here, as I tell people, when you look for a key pin, if I angle it up like this, you can see a little piece of metal in there. It looks like a bullet reflecting light. That's the key pin. This, you can't see anything in here. It's like, what the hell? It's just straight slop back. I mean, some guys are into that and some women are too, but like, what's, what's going on there? That's because this is a wafer lock. And that's particularly why I bought it, is because now I can teach people wafer locks. And it's pretty simple. 
as I tell people, you use the same tensioner and technically, 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 you can also use a hook or even better a half diamond. But every time I, I have a lockpick kit, including my own personal one, the thing that people ask me, let's go to the other camera, is what the hell are these tools? Like what, what is this? This is alien. Like what is this for like picking Italian locks? What's going on here, right? Uh, yes, thank you Zen Flash for uh, being in the chat. If you haven't followed us yet, um, if, and you like this content, you want to see uh, Master of Unlocking will be every first and third Saturday, including of this month, which means today, and if I remember correctly, uh, January um, 17th, 8 p.m. There's also a bunch of other shows, like Hack All and Commander, that frequents Wednesdays. Uh, G, um, our co-founder, G.I. Jack, has a show called Arch Vile Linux Perspective, uh, where he looks at Arch Linux and video games. I have another show called Crypto Barons, where I look at um, blockchain and cryptocurrency technologies as pieces of technology, and we dissect their code and stuff. And, of course, our normal meetings and certain special events. You can click that bell, hit like, share, subscribe on Twitch, DLive, or YouTube. If you also send us bits via Twitch, Super Chats on YouTube, or Lemons on DLive, uh, we also get notifications for those as well, and that way you get alerts and you keep in check for that. But thank you, Zen Flash, for being in the chat. Hope you have a good day. I hope you have a happy new year. Be safe out there. I hope you don't get the COVIDs or the stupidity that's even more contagious going around. And I uh, hope to see you on the show again. And tell me how your experience goes. And again, also, by the way, not doing it on this show. You might see pieces of it. If you want to know where to get good or certain equipment, I have a whole spiel for that. I can always go through that on an episode. Just let me get through the rest of this stuff first. So later on, anyone has any questions like, hi, I want to start out with some picks. And, you know, I've already pointed you to different, like, locks and stuff. But you want lock picks or whatever? Got you, fam. I can do that. But, yeah. So people keep wondering, what the hell are these? weird things what's called the snowman the half ball and sometimes there's the full ball because we love balls on this show and they're designed for raking and picking uh wafer locks and once to me you get this guy and let me just use the other uh just because it's more comfortable for me this smaller tension wrench once you get to me these two things i tell people even though it's wafers and these wafers are going to be one-sided hence why you don't need the uh, snowman because that covers two sides we're going to get to there with the expansion on that later um and again, great introduction. That's why I have this log. Eventually, I'd like to get one that's dremeled so you can see, but whatever. Um, it's it's the same as these master locks. There's four wafers. Two of them are already set. You just need to move two wafers in the back. And the thing about this is that this has a two-shackle click. Okay, I got one wafer in. Whereas the lock picking lower would say I got a click on one. Let me just reset real quick. Try that again because I'm kind of stupid right now. putting too much tension on it sometimes what also drives me crazy is sometimes these locks are camera shy for no goddamn reason and also probably over tensioning thing const everything constantly we're gonna get there Try a little bit of raking there. Actually, let me just rake this guy open just for the interest of time. There we go. I can also single wafer pick it, as it's called, or I guess that's SWP for single wafer picking as opposed to SPP, which is not SPC. Those are a completely different thing on the internet, but it's a single uh, pin picking, and I guess it's SWP is single wafer picking. But yeah. I have this specifically to teach about what wafer locks are, how to visually identify them, and what are the better tools that you would need in order to get these guys open. Because you can use the standard tools, but I personally find the uh, the half balls and snowmen and stuff better. Uh, then we get into this crazy variant where, once again, these two locks, let's see if I grab the right ones here. I've seen these on some past episodes. This entire bin is just this type. These look very similar. They have the word master lock on them. It's the same sort of plate design. They have rivets on them. They have the shackle. But once again, that one looks like a normal lock. What the hell is this zigzag piece of crap? What the hell is that? Let's put on the uh, close-up cam here. What what's what's going on here? What what is this twirly guy thing? Why don't I see any pins? Why don't I even see wafers? Like what the hell is this? That's because these, and they all have these black bands at the bottom, are um 
warded locks, which is one of, if not the oldest lock designs in existence. So this entire bin has not only these locks, but, and I have to grab the right one here, the keys, and I don't have one that's Dremel, this is the wrong key, um, but I do explain, I do have a, video, a YouTube video I show people of what it looks like on the inside and how it works. And the reason why, I mean, we still use these for like storage units and stuff because pin tumor locks not only wear down quicker, but they're also susceptible to weather. There's ways to harden them against weather, but they're more susceptible to that. Uh, these will almost last forever, almost. Uh, so a lot of people ask, well, uh, if these, you can't pick this lock open technically, and these are tougher, why don't we use warded locks anymore? And that's because someone figured out that if you ignore, if you make the shaft thin, thus ignoring the warding, all you need to do is engage the actuator. So a group, someone, or probably a group of people centuries ago, uh, researched the varying tips of these. And this is from Sparrows, but there's many others like it. These just happen to be mine. Came up with a common denominator list of the seven most common actuator heads with thin shafts. And these are sometimes errorlessly known as warded uh, lock picks. These are technically bypasses because you're bypassing the, all the warding. So I'm trying to remember which one actually works. And that's what you do. You just go through different ones here. So you put that in, and you try to engage the actuator, and you turn, and that didn't work. So let's try the wider head. She might like the wider head better. Let's see? Nope. Try that small head again, make sure so sometimes, you know, size isn't everything. Okay, so it's definitely the wide head. So let's try the, the small two pronged one. There we go. That was a pop. I'm going to do that again. See, I only had to try three of these in rapid succession. So I take this one in, these, this two pronged mushroom one, kind of looks like Donald Trump on a good day. Stick that all the way in there, engage that actuator, turn and, oh, hold on, and engage the actuator. Hard to do at this angle. That's what she said. Turn. And we got a pop. And so unless you have like odd things like different odd shaped keyholes and stuff, these five set of warded lock bypasses will pretty much get into most warded locks that you see out there. Like I would say like way higher than 90% of them. And that's what this entire bin has. And that's something that I teach. And some people kind of wonder, well, if this is so easy and quick, uh, like, like what she is, why don't I teach this first? And that's because, again, you have to learn how to crawl, crawl for your walk. You have to walk for how you run. Most of the people are going to encounter these uh, pin and tumbler locks that are, you know, it's tube design, this exact same design with the key pins, driver pins, spring tension, one tube, single file in a row. And with a key with this type of design and bidding that you put in and you turn and the actuator and it engages and it opens the lock. Uh, not only are the warded locks because they've been uh, more out and out of use are uncommon, um, but to me, once you get the kind of general gist of what a lock looks like on the inside and then how to exploit it, it's easier to then start applying that methodology to other lock systems. Again, it's not just we have progressive locks. This whole kit is designed to be a progressive teaching tool. You know, it's kind of like AOC. So what do we have here? So now we're going to wrap it up here with a bunch of miscellaneous things. We're going to get into this first. All of these in my hand, I'm going to try to fit them all in my hand, are all, this is hilarious combination locks and I need to get more decoding tools but I do have a common decoding tool this one is known as Sparrow's decoder it's a thin piece of metal with a good handle 15 thousandths of an inch it's, you can hear it's very springy put it next to the mic it's like the Jews harp boing 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 uh, where you can go into the wheel slots and you can feel and decode the different wheels. What's also funny, and by the way, this is just for show, uh, this is a great example of sometimes you can get something like the very exploitable Master Lock 175, and as my mentor realized when he looked into it, 
has a defect in which the actual bypassing technique doesn't work. <laughs> the coding technique kind of works, uh, but the bypassing technique is completely bunk literally because of a manufacturing error. So ironically, by making an error on the lock, they improve the security on it, go figure. Sometimes you encounter that in the lock world. But uh, like this one, I can. this is one of the worst locks. I can decode it, I can pick it here with its four pin tumbler, I can rake it open. Uh, but because it shares the same clone body, this is a modern lock. This only came out a couple of years ago. This is from the 70s, same internals. So uh, even though I'm gonna show more of this in a bit later, I can Let's see if I can do this correctly. All right, let me try that again. Oh, that's why. I almost made that mistake. What are we on here? Whose side are you on? Hold on. There we go. And I can bypass it with the decoder. The manufacturing error was the fourth wheel is a decent size larger than the other wheels. You can actually feel that. So like this rotates fine, this rotates fine, this rotates fine. Oh, like that, yeah. It is jammed in there, that last wheel. So yeah, that that's why. With the too big of a wheel, nothing fits. So I have that. And then some of these locks are great because especially with master lock, this one has none of the same manufacturing problems as all the cloned 175s. They literally designed this to replace the 175 series in clones, but has a bunch of new flaws where I'm not gonna do it on here, but there's techniques, in this case, pulling on the shackle and feeling the wheels, where same thing with this word decoder one, where you pull on the shackle and move the wheels and you can just decode it without using any tools whatsoever, but literally your bare hands. Unfortunately, I just have human hands, but that's all that. And then my favorite combination lock is your standard one that you see in every middle school and high school because there's a fun technique that I'm only going to do once. I did this um, when we did all the decoding episodes I showed this, so I'm not going to repeat this, but just so we can get through to go on the break and continue the episode, uh, I'm just going to go through it really once. So let's, I have the code on the back of it, but let's pretend we didn't know. So what you do is you set it to zero, right? And then, uh, actually, let me, let me just quickly read. I'm blocking the number here. I just try and remember the, okay, right, left, right. All right, sorry, sometimes I forget that. So what we do here is we circle right three times. One, two, three, and I'm gonna do the close-up cam for this. And so what we're gonna do, and this is actually the hardest part, is we're gonna put tension on the shackle and it's not gonna to be too much tension. We're not gonna pull the entire shackle out. We're gonna kinda of let it hover in the middle, but it is gonna tension it. And what we're going to do is we're going to feel when it like gets really stuck. So this is like, it's kinda of stuck. You see how loose these feel? We're gonna keep feeling around and then eventually Oh boy, see how much that one, like if we go to a previous one that moves a lot, this one barely moves, right? So then what, oh sorry, wait a minute. That one kind of, let's, oh yeah, here we go. This one is where it gets stuck, right? So then you count one, two, three, and that's the first number. Now, here's the key, uh, remember that number. We're now gonna reset it and try a different thing here. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go past the first number, that 13, and then we're gonna feel all the way around, full tension, until we get to a number where, see how loose it is? Where it's like barely going to move. And that should be our second number, uh, turning it to the left. Ah, you see how that barely moves? That's the second number. So we remember that one. So now we're gonna do that, we're gonna reset, do the first two numbers. So here we go. So we're gonna do no tension on this. So we're gonna do one, two, three in the first number. God, I hope this works the first time. Oh, okay. Hopefully I didn't go past it too much. 
and then we're going to go past zero like you normally do and go to that second number. And now what we're going to do is we're going to count back four. Uh, sorry, we're going to count back two, if I remember correctly. I hope I'm doing this right. It's been a while. One, two, and pull on the shackle. Now, if it doesn't open, what we do is we keep counting back four, I believe, and eventually we'll hit the number. So let's try this. Otherwise, I'll restart and I'll do it the reverse one because, again, it's been a while and I'm dehydrating. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yep, that was the open. So those were the numbers. Again, I'm not going to show that again. We did an entire episode where I mythologically walk through and explain how the internals work and stuff. But that's my favorite non, you don't have to use that decoder tool. You could try to use it in the field for it, but they have certain things against it. And you also have a hard time shimming this. But yeah, that's why I have this. Um, then we have a couple of locks that are just, they have spool pins. Uh, they have, they have narrow, sorry, narrow recessed, damn it, where is this lens? There we go. Uh, recessed tiny keyways. They're heavy as shit. We're actually going to revisit two of these. And I just have these for like more intermediary stuff. This, by the way, this one that says master lock is this one's literally a clone of this one, except for the different shackle design. So yeah, Master Lock basically bought American Lock so that they could claim that they actually make competent locks. Leave this one out here for a moment. Uh, so before we go on break, this is fun. And so now we're gonna go on this bin. And this baggie is pretty much all the public tools. Most of these public tools are either tools that I used to own that I have duplicates of, so I put these in here. These are the ones that the people use. Or that, as some of them you can see here, these were originally the crappy Chinese ones, which I can tell not only because I know where they came from, but they have like this black resin and they have the two rivets sandwiched between together. And basically I had to, uh, in my kit at home, I should say, I have, uh, whoop, God, everything's falling, rubber gloves and I have sandpaper, or in this case, I have a sandpaper in the shape of a sponge and I rub it on here or I sandwich it, I was hurting my hands, and rub it through, and basically I smooth it out. And honestly, if you start getting more serious about your lock picks, you should do that in general, uh, no matter how perfected, unless you can tell they're truly perfected or tumbled they are, um, because all lock picks, just like locks, have manufacturing errors, so they're not completely smoothed out or put in the tumbler for too long, especially if they're cheaper, so you're gonna wanna get used to that. Not required, but when you get a bit more knowledge, especially when I'm like, I can take crappy tools and make them decent tools, that's a good thing. Ignore this guy at the bottom, this is here for fun. So these last two, even though this has a caveat, this isn't the infamous Avis uh, 7240 here that I got in orange because I have nothing else that's in orange currently. And this big one here, and I do have issues with these, I have and I've modified, I've taken wafers out and stuff so that I can, which is very recent, demo bypassing tools on them. Uh, I'm gonna attempt to try to do the American lock. I It was working fine for a while, but then I had an issue uh, where now it's barely working and I'm either gonna have to get another one. I think either this lock is slightly defective or I just basically like ward it down. Again, when you pick locks and do bypasses, um, you will eventually, uh, yeah, here we go, it's getting stuck. You will wear out uh, either the tool or the lock itself. Um, and then the lock stops working. Uh, so I'm probably unfortunately gonna have to get another one of these, but I can actually leave this here for picking. I basically took the security wafer out of uh, this guy here. Uh, I probably shouldn't hand the lock, but that's fine. And the funny thing with the Abus is I would show you the Abus one, but they don't actually make this model publicly anymore. And the issue is that this is a newer version and either I have a defect or which is what I'm thinking, everything is now slightly smaller, the lock body, the key, the shackle, than what they used to be. And so now the bypass for it 
does not fit because essentially where you would normally sandwich the bypass is too tight. So I'm still working on roughing out the kinks in, um, actually this one goes over here, uh, roughing out the kinks in um, the bypasses. Um, what I can show you though is a cool bypass thanks to GI Jack buying a really crappy lock from China because it actually has this security flaw are these two things that have my personal kit. Eventually I'm gonna get multiples to put in the training case. Uh, and this is the master switch system. This is what up until like the early to mid 2000s and before, uh, master locks one through five, and this is a, a clone of the master lock number three would run into. So I'm not gonna explain because we literally covered that two episodes ago, but I take the talon one here, push all the pins up, push it in the back, and now it's locked in. I can tell because it's springy, it's not going anywhere. Now this, it might just pop instantly when I do this, but I'm gonna take the other cook, put it in an upside down, bomb the keyway, I usually find the left side working better, slides it to its own slot, and then when I wiggle these two together, oh, come on, here we go, it pops open. And that's how the master system works. Basically you're engaging the two locking parlor mechanisms that are unshielded at the same time. And thus, if you find an older Master lock, if you can set, if it's not ball bearing and you can set that in there, uh, that works. Two last things, and then uh, I'm going to read chat in a bit, and then we're going to, oh, by the way, also have one of these door decoder keys because once you know how the decoder tool works, you can just decode these particular ones all day. And I see these on build, all sorts of buildings from government buildings to dog houses to just things. Where I, you know, if someone was really bad, they could just decode this really easily and get all the keys to your place. So do not buy these, but these are fun to teach how to decode. Did an entire episode about that. Uh, a couple more things before we move on with the kit. So I'm going to preliminary start putting, oh, things back. Because then we're going to transition to the next part. Uh, I'm going to actually put some of the lock picking tools away again. I'm going to read chat in a moment. If anyone has any questions about uh, what I have been talking about so far, uh, or you wanna shout out something or anything like that that's appropriate because sometimes we get in like terrible spam bots that I have to like blast off the face of the earth and shit like that. Um, please let me know in chat. I love talking with the chat. Uh, otherwise, as I keep saying, keep lurking and keep learning. Um, you, I believe, and this should be you, but we're gonna find out. So this, are either just tiny stupid locks that I can't put anywhere else, or this is kind of the beginning of the naughty bucket. These aren't locks that are impossible to open. These are just unknown and frequently for most people, including sometimes myself, more so this one than this one. Big pain in the ashes. These actually have security pins and stuff in them. They're actual intermediary locks to pick open. So I keep these in here. Also, they're not like master locks or American locks or whatever. So for most people, that seems like they're unknown manufacturers. This guy, this will be a future episode. This is a work in progress. Uh, if you'll notice, again, odd slot, odd keys. Like, what the hell? Like, let's take a normal key. Uh, you know? Like, this is like a pin tumbler key. What alien piece of shit is this? Um, this is a disc detainer. It's its own locking system where you can see here because it's clear you move discs in a row and there's no spring you just pull the shackle out they got this from china because they make these clear locks and which did came with this and one of them i can't show you because it's broken and i need to fix it is the actual tool that comes with the tensioner that you can pick these open this is a variant of it a uh, fun fact i'll get in later there's actually top and bottom of the keyway tensioning tools and picks for them. And this is a bottom of the keyway tensioner. You tension with this guy and then pick with this. The one that you're probably used to seeing is actually a top the keyway tensioner. And speaking of that, before they went not, I think they're more stable selling these now, but I missed these in February, but when they went on sale in August, I got this. Probably see me on Instagram, take this apart. And this is the infamous tool that, Bos that lock picking lawyer and Bosnia and Bill made. No, it's not what's in their pants, believe it or not. This is, it should be like the light from Pulp Fiction coming out of this. Oh, this is the Sparrow's disc detainer. When eventually we do the episode on disc detainers, I'm gonna have to train myself to say disc detainer because I will guarantee at one point I'll accidentally say dip detainer 
and that's a completely different thing here. But yeah, uh, this is normally what you would use. This is the tensioning system, and then this is the pick. It's kind of hard to see again because it's it's a solid black tool because you know sparrows, and you would go in line things up and when all the gates are properly lined up which they're not but we're going to do this anyhow you put this in and you, you tension it top of the keyway and then you go in through this and you move the different gates now i'm going to try to unstick this uh i'm trying to get the old tool to work because actually because of how thin this head is i can also which i am going to work in making a wider head on this the thinness of this is actually way easier to do this with, um, and this is a great tool by the way, I love this, I reviewed this a while back. Um, this is for primarily high security versions of these. Low security ones, they, this the picking head actually gets stuck between the uh, discs on this. So I'm either gonna do what Rook Knight did, shout out to him, and create it, probably I'm gonna do both a replacement head uh, that's thicker, that works on the low security ones, and or I'm just, I just need to stop being lazy and use some soldering and repair the old one. So that is the disc detainer. And as far as I know, we have one final, one final thing in this kit to go over before we move on to the next segment, which will probably be the shortest segment. And when you hear me put this on the floor, you can hear how heavy this is. And this is the thing that currently won't fit in the case. So unfortunately I'm missing the key for the clear one here, but when people are used to high security and different keyways, I'm actually gonna sit down for this, um, pin and tumbler locks, I then move them onto tubular locks. Uh, as you can notice with the pattern, one of the first things I got, which actually this all came with this except for this piece, is this is a clear, Tubular lock. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the key for this, sadly. Uh, I have it. It's somewhere in my room. I stupidly put it somewhere, and it, I probably put it on my table, and it fell off, so I have to be like Wayne Zizinski from Honey, I Shrunk the Kids and suspend myself with a giant uh, magnifying glass face piece and comb my floor for it. Um, but my mentor, because you can buy these from Tool, helped me make these, and this is a tubular lock that is that is specifically designed with just enough tolerance but still low tolerance to be used to pick so you can learn how to pick this and of course which I don't have the tool that would actually properly tension this but you can actually single pin pick this with normal tools it's a big pain in the ass this is why these used to be considered high security the other thing that's in here is the reason why most of them are not considered high security anymore because I have what are known as um, and I'm gonna try this it might not work the first time that's what she said, are tubular lock impressioners. In which, if I remember this correctly, and I'm really malnourished now, just insert this here, and you do like a force wiggle motion, it's probably not gonna work because I'm not paying attention correctly. Plus again, I think I need to like lube these. I know this is the one that actually works on this, although I might have a slight variant, it might work better. Yeah, I think I need to WD-40 this. <laughs> yeah, uh, normally it would, you do a couple of wiggles with these and these are three different sizes. Um, and not only will these pretty much open, and we did that on the show when we covered tubular locks, because it's basically, uh, as we covered on the show, it's, a, it's the same pin tumbler lock that you see in that clear padlock, but it's arranged, in, same innards and everything, different geometrical pattern shape. And that's what people had to crack to figure that out, A, how to tension it, how to pick it, and eventually how to do all three, including impressioning it, because once you get this open, the different pick feelers on this, which you can see if I can go to the close-up cam real quick, there's these like little feelers on the end, um, will be in the place, so I could keep using this as the key, and if I measured them all the way around properly, I can just order a tubular lock key, and now I have the actual key for this, hence why it's a decoder. So yeah, this currently doesn't fit in the current lock picking kit. And that's why I keep it outside. Uh, the next case one, I will either figure out how to put them in there or I'll put it in a duffel bag with, uh, or actually I'll put it in the pocket, the side pocket that you would normally wheel uh, the both cases with and have this in here as a side thing. So 
that's everything that was in there. So we literally went from being in one tin, those two little bins, and as you saw, as I filled up each bin, it got so big that I, there's stuff that I can't even, because oh, I forgot to put this one away, different sizes of objects, and this is full, I can't even put everything in here. And it just turned into this giant case. And I'm still not done. So what we're gonna do is I need to rehydrate. I also need to move this table and I need to reposition this camera because now you're gonna see my face because we're gonna look at a web browser and we are gonna go over not everything, but some of the tools and teaching aids I'm going to be ordering or attempting to ordering when I have money, like now to some degree, throughout the year. So I'm going to read chat really quick before I go into, uh, hang on. So we're still streaming here. And I can see guys in chat. I think it's just my, uh, I'm streaming through a Nintendo. Uh, I'm, I have another stream through a Nintendo Switch with, uh, there we go, uh, with YouTube. And sometimes it catches up. I'm going to read chat a bit. Let's see. Um, let's see. Light tension, LMMO. Tell me what's wrong. Got that from... Tells me I'm wrong, got that from Norland and I loved it. I'm not sure exactly what's being talked about here. When I can get an all-in-one training case with locks, where can I get an all-in-one? Um, unfortunately, there is no all-in-one per se. Like you're not gonna get something like what I made. This has to be done in pieces. These are, because of I'm picking and choosing the best that I can get, they are from different manufacturers, different countries, different materials, different specifications for what I need things for in order to not just teach, never mind teaching myself, but to teach other people. However, which we will get into in the second part, there are some pre-made kits where if you want to learn basic lock picking and to get to a mediary stage, you can either order one to three things from one storefront or just one thing that will help you out for a while before you move on to other locks. Also find the nearest Lowe's or Home Depot. I personally prefer Lowe's or your just local hobbyist hardware store and just once you learn the progressive picks and stuff, buy some locks and start working on them and uh, you'll start learning that way because you're working on real locks. So anyhow, we're going to go on a quick break. I'm going to play some music. I'm going to get more water. This is going to be a quick segment. Move the camera so you can see my lustrous face and uh, we'll cover in how I'm going to some pieces of where I'm going to be going at least in the next six months with expanding this kit, things that I want. None of this, I have my own list for personal th personal things I want. Uh, this is just some of the stuff that I'm going to, in no particular order, even though I'm going to try in a particular order, be ordering from. And I will get to read more of your comments, interact with you. And then probably around 11, or a little bit before so, we will end the stream, we'll raid someone on Twitch, and we'll have awesomely start off the Master of Unlocking for this year. Also, we're going to shout out a cool charity that um, Lockpickers United uh, alerted me to. So, enjoy the music. I will be back. And uh, yeah, enjoy the music while I go do the magic. Tell me if you agree that this love is true. I said, tell me, baby, won't you tell me if you can see me in the future? So, do you feel like I feel? Oh, 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 
Wow, what was that music? And we are back. Uh, for those of you who may have just tuned in on after the break, uh, no, uh, I am not uh, Tim Pool. Thank God, I actually do have a forehead and everything under this. Uh, I'm just trying to keep a little bit warm in here, unlike Pim Tool, who was rumored to have another Pim Tool face uh, under his beanie, his other face, because he's a two-faced motherfucker. Um, I am Side Pocket. I'm one of the two co-founders of DefCon 201. We are a computer hacker group that's based out of Jersey City. Uh, Jersey City, New Jersey, in the in the Hudson uh, Valley area. Uh, we normally meet up there for every month. In fact, our online streamed meeting this month will be on um, ah, on the uh, on January fifteenth, twenty twenty one. We actually made it. We made it past twenty twenty. Please improve slightly. Like you know, I don't know. Just give us free pocky. That's all I ask. Um, but anyhow. Uh, if you are looking forward to that meeting and want to know details that we'll be releasing uh, hopefully later this week, or if um, you want to know more about this show or upcoming shows or what we're doing, you can go and check us out at our website, which is at defcon21.org. We're also all over social media, including uh, defcon21nj on Twitter, and we're uh, defcon201 on uh, yeah, Instagram, uh, GitHub, uh, we're on the hostux.social instance of Mastodon. And in fact, I'm going to type in dc201 social media and type in this link and sorry for the wobbly cam i'm going to fix that in a moment freaking uh gaming you know laptops like they're not they're great but they're not good but they have the power to stream there we go uh if you click on that link tree you can find all of our links right there so we are back earlier which was most of our episode we took a look of my future children uh the portable lockpick training kit that i've developed over the course of 2020 to bring to our meetings portable that actually hurt my spleen and probably part of my soul too because this is all money i'll never get back but it was worth it i think um trying to teach people including myself uh, lock picking hobbies i used to do some person uh at tool meetings, that's the Open Organizational Lock Pickers, T-O-O-O-L, that's tool with three O's, dot U-S. We might visit that website in a moment. Uh, as well as our own local DEF CON 2-1 meetings and just various conventions because it's a fun thing to teach and it lets people think about not only physical security and what we take for granted, but also security in general. You can easily apply this to digital security as a foundation, blah, 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 blah. Also, I, again, it's fun. You can do stuff with your hands that involves wearing pants. Um, because of COVID and police brutality, that's why I stream this show now. So I can continue teaching people about locks picking and lock sport, um, as well as continue to learn and not having this kit because it was for two months, just stagnated. There was no new locks or anything, no new mechanisms. It was just collecting dust. So this is my way to do everything along. And then eventually when I meet in person, not only will I continue this show, but I'll be able to teach in person again. Maybe, maybe at Hushcon, maybe, maybe Hushcon will actually come back. Who knows? I hope so, because I, on purpose, this last couple of one, uh, including the, f uh, except for the first one I went to, uh, when it was the first one in, in New York, and the year I wanted to go back last year, COVID happened. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go over to Bowser mode, or browser mode, as they call it. Let me go full screen here. And uh, we are going to look at... Um,
Get on it. I'm sorry. Thank you for messing the chat. I forgot to turn the audio on. I am a grandpa. Let's go back. Let's rewind. And go back to face mode again. Here we go. Take two. Hi, I'm Side Pocket. I am a fucking idiot. Um, I'm one of the two co-founders of DEFCON 201. Uh, I also teach people lock picking and lock sport, which is what this show is about, Master of Unlocking, where we learn how physical security, particularly how lock mechanisms work, uh, the defects they have with them, the security measures they have with them, and how we can exploit these flaws in them in order to uh, find out cool things about them and how security kills. It's fun. Um, we normally meet, we're a hacker group, a uh, subgroup of DEF CON groups. Uh, you can go to defcongroups.org to find that stuff out. Uh, about what DEF CON groups is. We normally meet the, f the third Friday of every month, which this month in 2021, baby, thank freaking God, 2020 is over. I hope it's at least slightly better. Give us like free Pocky or something. Man, this is going to be awkward when I watch this episode that it's going to be like two minutes of just like that. Um, you know, I've only been doing this for since May, and I am basically the dad that left the lens cap on when filming his kid. So, uh, if you want to know more details about what we are in Jersey City, New Jersey, and about our upcoming meeting that we'll have information later this week on, uh, that meeting itself will be on January 15th, or you want to know about this show or other upcoming shows such as, ha such as Hack All and Commander, Archfile Linux Perspective, my other show, Crypto uh, Barons, as well as just various specials and cool hacker things, you can go down and visit our website at defcon21.org. We're also all over social media. Our big main one is Twitter, which has a unique URL due to stupidity, at defcon21nj. And we're on defcon201 on everything from um, GitHub to Instagram, on the hostdux.social instance of Mastodon, all over the place. We even have a Minds account, even though those people drive our minds crazy. Uh, so what? We're, so earlier, what you saw, and I'll do this again and hurt my balls. Ah, this is the portable lockpick training kit that I would normally take to tool meetings. That is T O O L tool with three O's. The open organization of lockpickers. You can find them at T O O O L tool three O's dot U S. Um, as well as our own DEFCON 21 meetings and cool events and stuff because I love teaching locks. I'm pretty good at it, apparently, according that's what people tell me when they want me to do things. And, uh, yeah, I've been developing this all of 2020. And uh, actually, at the end of 2019, but most of the development of this has been through 2020. And, uh, yeah, so I did a tour about what, how it started, how we started, how's it going, as you can see, you can fill this whole thing out. I am losing blood flow in my legs. Ugh. It's just strong. And um, by the way, when Tool brings stuff to conventions like DEF CON hackers on planet Earth and shit, you multiply that by like 80 billion and that's how heavy all this shit is. Because locks, fucking giant brass things and steel, that's fucking heavy. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to switch over to browser mode now. This is going to be the shortest segment. We're probably going to end at around 11, and then we'll go over to Twitch chat and be like, yay. And uh, so stick around for a bit. We're going to go to look at browser mode, and we're going to go look at some storefronts where we are going to, um, I keep saying where we're going to, uh, sip, sip, not the phone, water. Ooh, that was a good lame joke. Lame's tech joke right there. But uh, we are going to look at various storefronts of some of the things I'm going to be buying in the future. And no, this is not my own personal stuff. I have a separate list of like ways I'm going to upgrade my own personal lockpicking kits because I really need to upgrade them. Uh, the tools have been great so far, especially a lot of them I've been given to early on. But now I've kind of outgrown them and I need more specifics. Plus, I can then add these to the general tools uh, that I use to train people. So we're going to learn, again, as I said, I'm going to make a second kit of this uh, that will go into a stroller uh, because they're my babies. Don't look at me or my sons ever again. And uh, we, uh, I'm going to show you some of this stuff. Not everything because it's not a total list and my brain only works so far. But some of the more intermediary stuff that I'm going to get and what you're going to essentially see in some of the future episodes of Master of Unlocking. So let's do this pro properly and go back to browser mode here. All right. This is our website, by the way. Huge shout out to Sarah Sill, who you may have heard of dying earlier. 
uh, who made this website. Uh, he's a really freaking awesome dude. He's basically the only reason why anything runs around here. As you can see, our last meeting details are up. It was on December 18th. Our next meeting's will be on December 15th, and this is great. There's no JavaScript or anything. Really slick stuff, and we're going to be upgrading it throughout the first half of the year because we love tinkering uh, as long as it mostly works. Um, but before we get into this segment, I do want to shout out something that the people at Lockpickers United, otherwise known as our Lockpicking on Reddit, wanted to point out to me. And I'm just going to read what they wrote here. It's all the way at the top. So they are doing a 2021 Lockpicking Charity Raffle. Welcome to the 2021 Lockpicking Charity Raffle. We are thrilled to be kicking off 2021 in what has turned out to be a much bigger event than last year. Make sure you're sitting down before continuing because the prize pool is absolute bonkers. First of all, big thanks to the people who have helped put this together. Robo, oh god, this is like, wow. I don't even know if I'm gonna read this entire paragraph. I'm just gonna read some of these. Robo, Logan is on Discord. Decoder, Bonks, and Corellian. Extra big thanks to the 53 prize contributors who have made this insane prize pool a reality. Multipig, Mako, Sparrows, Lock Law Tools, I'm McGround, The Lock Ness, Bonks, Colton++, plus plus, which I assumed was a freaking programming language. Rayoak, Mr. Black Magic, that's what I do in bed. Room Picker, Super Bird, not to be confused with Super Grover. Sergeant A8, Lambda 2 Lockpicks, who I also follow on Instagram, is amazing. Uh, Sapiz, HV Logic, Feral Shooters, Z Dubs Ready, and just a crap ton that my eyes are winging out trying to read. I didn't know about this. Otherwise, honestly, I would have contributed something. If they do this again in 2022, or if there's still room to put something in there, I will gladly contribute to this. Entries will be accepted through January 31st, and the prize drawing will happen via live stream on February 1st. Oh, cool. We might be able to do, actually, when is February 31st? Because I can't tell time. That is a Monday. Oh, this is weird. So normally we would, okay, so we're the first third so the first and third Sundays of the month meaning that extra week we're gonna have this month normally we would ignore that week right so if we were doing every other Sunday we would have had one on the 31st but it turns out this can be drawn on the one we might do a special master of unlocking on the first or depending on how they're doing it essentially restream and or watch and react as master of unlocking the prize drawing stream I'll talk to them about that that might be a cool thing by the way, the next episode of Master of Unlocking is on the 17th, and you really don't want to miss that. Uh, but yeah, the, the times are going to be uh, almost a PlayStation time. What drugs am I on? Uh, Pacific Standard Time, or PST, not PSTD. Exact times are going to be TBT, or to be determined. Weekly updates will be provided with information on the total money raised, as well as snapshots of the distribution of tickets in the pots. You are welcome to change your ticket distribution at any time, should any information influence your choice. We are also separately keeping track of how much is being raised through both Reddit and Discord. Hmm, maybe next episode we will do a fundraiser just for Master Unlocking. Who knows? That might work out. Uh, I'm not going to reveal what it is. We will announce it later, and you'll just have to show up on the 17th for that. Just saying, if even I get a part of this right, it's going to be big. Uh, unrelated to this, I'm now kind of putting the sparks of how this would tie together. But anyhow... Um, you're welcome to change your ticket distribution anytime should any information influence your choice. We are also separately keeping track of how much is being raised from both Reddit and Discord and is a competition between the two. Okay, so they're competing between the R lock picking and the Lock Picking United uh, Discord. Rules. Each US dollar is an equivalent rounded down donation counts as one ticket during the drawing. The charity you are donating to must be approved by the moderation team. Uh, below is a list of recommended charities that have already been approved. Should your preferred charity not be in the list, do not hesitate to contact the moderation team to discuss your preferred charity. It's crazy because we just did a charity stream. You know what? If they actually do Child's Play, I'll go fuck it and extend the thing just to do this day. Like, I kind of wish I knew that because I would have still done it in December, but I would have made the charity thing two weeks. So now I know. This is the first time I'm reading this. Uh, I have a lot of messages for them now. Uh, the list will be updated as more are approved. The donation must be from after the start of the raffle, so I'm guessing after today. Members of the moderation team and those who are working with them to make this charity raffle happen are not allowed to participate. This is done to ensure the process remains fair. How to participate. Step one, select a charity to donate to. If it's not on the list below, send a message to moderators confirm first. Step two, donate. Please take a screenshot of some proof that donation was accepted and valid. Uh, like the email or the splash page. Step three, send a message to the mods via mod mail 
that's an interesting term, uh, that contains the screenshots as well as how you would like to distribute your tickets among the prize pots. The moderation team should contact you and notify you that you have been entered into the drawing. If you want to be extra awesome, you can check if your employer does donation matching. I'm broke, so that's not going to happen. If it doesn't get if it doesn't give extra tickets but means you're extra awesome. That kind of reads as if it doesn't get extra tickets it puts the lotion on its skin. That was just a weird sentence. And then I'm assuming the next step is five question marks and then Profit, and then you win the Triwizard Tournament when they enter your name in the cut when you get to fight Voldemort. So there's a huge list of approved tra charities that I'm not going to open this because I don't want to kill the stream. And there's a ticket tracker for all of this. So there is apparently a charity competition going on. I am highly interested. I wish I knew this bef way beforehand um, that this is entering. And I'm going to go in right now and I'm going to type in um, uh, Walk Pick. There's United Charity Contest. And I'm going to make a spell check here because I am an idiotimate. What the? Not chair farts. There's a new, there's an next insert reward, by the way. There we go. So why are, what did you just do? There we go. So this is the link to the same Reddit thread I was reading where you can go and participate in this. I am highly interested in participating in this, so we're just shouting that out for everyone out there on Lockpick United, aka our, li our Lockpickers. We covered you folks on the show when we talked a bit about lockpicking communities in a couple episodes ago. This is awesome. Uh, I can't wait to see how this results, and I really hope that outside of just promoting it, that I can either participate in it, whether trying to raise funds for a charity, uh, even if it's my own money, which I have not that much of, or... Um, putting together something in the prize pool because I'm I'm not a super I'm not lock picking lawyer or anything I didn't I didn't make a tool of Bosnia and Bill but uh, I could figure out something so let's look into some of the th ways I'm going to expand this whole toolkit set the first thing I'm going to do is round out a lot of the pin and tumbler stuff and I actually just realized here I might have a let's see do I actually have a missed uh, I might have a um, what do you call it a item here that I put in the wrong order because I am super dumb just give me one moment here ah uh, here we go okay everything still works alright so we're going to go to sparrows first, and a bunch of these are going to be sparrows, but and remember, these are not my own personal things that I want to do for my new uh, everyday carrier, EDC. This is for the training kit. So the next one, well, the next, oh, that's the actual page I was looking at. The next thing, I, one of the things I want to put in is the sparrows reload kit. Reload. Re, 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 reload. Shoot outside of the screen. Um, this thing is amazing. So what it is, is it's a kit that you can construct to make practice locks for intermediary training, um, mainly with security pins and bidding types. So this is kind of the entire kit you get. Uh, it comes with four keys in four different colors. I also might modify these keys slightly and put a small symbol on them so that if you are colorblind and you don't look at the bidding, you still know which key, but I'm still gonna determine uh, if I if I should do that and if I do which I'm leaning towards it how I'm gonna do that like I don't know if I should make like a etch pattern in here or something but you have three different keys sorry four different keys I can't count with uh, different colors the black key uh, which is what I'm actually gonna do is put like either standard pins or a mix of security pins and standard pins but the neat thing about this is that all these keys especially in the Sparrow stuff that are schlegs, you can tell SC1 in the type of head design here, um, are all five pinners. This is the six pinner key. So even though I have like, for example, the Asa Alboy that is six pins with security pins, um, this allows me to teach people outside of the uh, progressive kits how to make a more difficult six pin, not just six pin, but they're normal pins. I'll have like a, you know, like I'll have a normal pin, then a, a spool, a serrated, a spool, serrated, and a mushroom, something like that. And then the rest of these, I'm going to pin normal pin. You have this blue one, which has a ramping. It's, it looks flat, but it's actually a ramping, which means 
you will accidentally overset and under and drop pins if you single pin pick, but this is really susceptible to raking. So this would be a nice way to like easily teach people how to rake. And then the red key has a low, high, low. And this, the green key has a high, low, high, which again, I talked about that pinning variance. And uh, I'm gonna, not only, and this kit's amazing, so you get those keys and you get a shit ton of pins. And what's really cool is you also get a shit ton of security pins. So you get serrate, uh, spool, mushroom, and serrated pins. Uh, let me actually see if I can, there we go. Increase the size, God, I wish I could do that in real life. And um, you get in this tin and you get this cool crenellated, um, I'm trying to think what we call it, uh, pass through. Uh, so you can properly open and remove these Schlage cores that all of Sparrows comes with. And I like that all the Sparrows stuff they sell is like modular. And then what's really cool, because I actually don't have a full-size pinning mat yet, although there's a way to cheat, you get a big, shallow, wide Tupperware and you put a paper towel in it. And that's kind of your bootleg pinning mat in the way of like you won't have any real order, but at least when you drop pins, they won't go flying everywhere and rolling off like you saw with that lock that tumbled out of my hand earlier and the worst ta-da ever existed. But you get these mini pinning mats, one that aligns your pins up and one that you can just put on the side and have dissected uh, stuff over here. So I said, I use cardboard as a pinning tray. Now you can do that too. I also know a lot of people, which I'm interested in, not only do they make and you can also download templates of uh, 3D uh, pinning trays that you can make with a 3D printer, whether you order them or you have a 3D printer, but you can also modify them. So like I, I think Lockpicking Lawyer and Lock Noob, I think particularly Lock Noob, has a 3D printed pinning tray that actually has his logo and uh, handle on there. So like you can do cool stuff like that. A lot of cool things you can actually do with 3D printing with um, lock sports stuff. Strip on one side of the paper sort of stuff and the curricular grooves are perfect. Yep, that, that perfectly works as well. Um, and uh, what's really neat is I'm actually going to get the one that has the tweezers included. So it's going to be a little bit more expensive than $16. And I want this because I want to, you know, again, I said I have the progressives one through six. I have really beginner locks that even with the one spool and that 140, it really doesn't matter because of how badly they're pinned. Um, I have the clear lock to show what's inside. I have spool trainers and I have cut throughs for spool and serrated. This will allow me to make a full intermediate range here where I can have a difficult six pinner that's not pre-made. Um, I can have uh, base pins but with a dedicated high, low, high, and low, high lows. And one that is hard to single pin pick or more difficult to single pin pick for a beginner learning intermediary, but you can rake and that shows the difference between like raking and single pin picking. Um, all this looks like challenging fun. Yes, it is. And here's the part where it gets expensive for me. I'm going to, along with this, get the progressive Sparrows Locks. I told you about this earlier when I showed you the cutouts. Uh, these are the same, except they're not cut it out, and they're a lot easier and more simple. You get four of them, so you start with two pins, three pins, four pins, and with five pins, and they have this Schlage design. So what's neat about this, and again, everything's modular, these Schlage's, are the exact same schlegs that the Relo kit uses, including the crenulator uh, 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 pass-through, as well as these keys. So I'm buying both of these, and essentially I'm going to uh, open these guys up, dump the pins out, although I'm going to use the little... Sp oh, I forgot to do shackle bypasses. Ah, look up uh, last episode for that. Uh, but I'm going to put them in these baggies, maybe not with the Sparrows logo on them, just to keep them in order just in case I want dedicated two to five pin progressives that I can do with like another lock series or something. But I'm going to take these, take them apart, dump their pin springs, their key pins, driver strings, uh, spool pins out. I'm going to save the springs though. And then here's what's going to be unique. I'm going to spend, not on camera obviously, unless I do a pre-recorded video before this time lapse, and I'm going to spray paint each of them each of these progressive locks that are now empty, the different colors of the keys. So one lock body is going to be, one of these is going to be black, one's going to be red, one's going to be green, one's going to be blue. And I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to spray paint them. I'm going to find paint that's the closest to the actual key color. And a note here, I'm either going to use tape or cotton balls for the core, 
So the lock body is going to be the color of the key, but the actual pin tumbler core here, uh, this turny girl, this turny boy or gal or non-binary, um, will be the original brass, just as a design flair and to keep things consistent. And of course, you won't see these numbers anymore. Um, and I'm also going to spray it with an after coating that will make it have a metallic shine as opposed to the dull brass look. Key, uh, obviously, I'm not going to need these keys. I'm going to save them in its own thing in storage. And then on air, when these are done drying out, I'm going to teach how you pin locks and how you repin a lock. So I might actually make like take the two pinner, put it back together, show how that key worked and how these keys don't obviously work. And then I'm going to take that colored one, show you how to easy pin these and how that works uh, when you repin them. This is more like a locksmith thing. We also might watch a fun, really fun locksmithing video from Hope uh, as a prelude to this. And I'm going to show you how to repin. And I'm going to do all four of them. And then when they're done, you'll have these lock bodies with the color, one black, one blue, one red, one green, pinned up and corresponded to the previously progressive ones that are now those colors. And now I have a full range, easy to use, color coded intermediary lock set. That's phase one. I have a very similar phase two that is shockingly even more expensive than this. This is probably honestly, ironically enough, where except for one or two other items, I'm probably gonna spend the most amount of money. And no, I'm not doing this all at once. I'm pacing myself out in chunks so I don't make myself go broke because you can ask Bosnia and Bill that is so easy to do, even on his income. It's so easy to just go broke on this. There's also cheap things. I, I, I always point out when there's deals. Oh, before I get to the second part, someone mentioned this. Yes, I want to get at least two revolvers. The revolvers are really cool because essentially they're good trainers for um, different pin types. So what it is is they call it revolver because it looks like a uh, – nothing too crazy – uh, they look like a revolver and a revolver gun where you chamber the bullets, which I think is a cool design. It has these same type of keys that the progressive, uh, these lock bodies have, right? They're all schlegs. I love saying it like that, schlegs. Um, and I won't tell you the, the bidding, and it's all the same bidding, by the way, but I won't tell you the order. But basically, I'll tell it this way. Each one has different types. So, so normal 12 o'clock position have normal pins uh, all I think they're all five pins initially, but I'm going to do them so they're all six pins, right? Then the next one has normal pins, but two of them are spool pins. And so you'd have to know, like with my progressive kit, how to do spools. That's at the three o'clock position. Then you, when you get to six o'clock, those are all serrated pins. So you'd have to learn, I had, again, I have the cut through of the lock, and two of these are serrated. And then the final one has two mushrooms, which are kind of like spool pins, but they're kind of a different type. So I don't know if I'm going to demo this on air. And plus, which I like too, you can use an Allen wrench here, which is why I'm thinking of maybe eventually getting three of them, but I'm initially going to get two just for hands-on training, which means I'm probably not going to purchase these until I know that in-person tool and DEF CON meetings in some capacity are happening. And of course, I'm going to disinfect everything. But I could also get like an extra revolver and repin this to be the most difficult fucking thing on the planet and just do insane shit. So yeah, I am going to get some revolvers. So the person who shouted out uh, how revolvers are awesome, yes, double yes, and gay yes, spelled Y-A-S, but with like five or 18 A's in the middle. So let me tell you the more, remember I said about the reload kit and getting the progressive locks? Let me show you the more expensive version of this, but it's gonna be so worth it. So they also have, for even cheaper than the reload kit, a master key pinning set. Uh, it's really cool design. Um, what makes me laugh about all of this is I found out through these through Lock Noob, and I love Lock Noob, and one of the things that's kind of amusing and oddly unique about him is that he is a Brit. That's nothing against him. He's like honestly the most laughable, awesome, not laughing at, but like awesome Brit person. Like to me, he's like Santa Claus, but British. I just love him. He's just like the best, like for real. Probably fanboying too hard, but no, for real, he's awesome. And so the thing is, is that he has a certain British accent. And I'm not going to say the other word he says in his British accent that I absolutely go nuts over because it's just amazing. But one of them is 
so when I first saw these, it was in his video, and he calls these the Masta Wafa. And I just love that. Like, I, I like actively, I think that should be a drinking name if he says Masta something or the other word that you just take a shot of whatever. It's just amazing. I love it. I, I'm pretty sure I say dumb things with my accent, my New Jersey, like Northeast New York metro area, slightly New England American accent. And, you know, the American accent is basically just saying English, pronouncing English badly. Um, but yeah, there's a master pinning uh, key pinning kit. And so this Masta wafer kit comes with different numbers. The numbers line up to the different tumblers of how you're going to repin this because they don't come with any lock bodies, similar to the Sparrows Reload kit. They're also all Schlegs, if you haven't noticed. And I'm going to on air pin these and teach people. Maybe I'll, I'll have mo I'll probably have most of these already pinned and then just pin up one of these and then go right into the lesson. But I'm going to teach myself as well as teach you all. I've already done pieces of this myself, but mainly teach you all the master, master keying systems or master wafering systems and how they work, what they're used for. And there's locks that I'm not going to show off here uh, that are called SFIC um, padlocks that are going to be the real world lock cases. So again, this is the demo. The real world lock cases. Oops, something happened. Oh, that's the incent reward. Eh, I spooked myself. Um, there, let me just make sure the audio is working on here. Yeah, if I have the audio on, yay. So, uh, yeah, uh, this is the training thing. And then I have two real world, real world locks that actually use the master key system that's not like a building door for a very specific purpose. And if you want to go look these up, these are F S F I C or SESFIC or SFIC padlocks. I'm going to get two of them. Uh, now I'm not going to explain how they work or why they use a master keying system, but there's a reason why basically they have two completely different shear lines. And it's not for security reasons, ironically enough. Although, ironically, to some degree, depending on your your level or what you're trying to go for, they might be more secure, they might be less secure. Who knows? They're very confusing to pick, I can tell you that. And what I like about this, and this is what makes this more complicated more expensive, is that, one, I like how they use this sort of play suit card, where there's one key that opens everything, and then there's two like super master keys that will open... Um, the, the color type of the suits and then there's one individual key for each but my problem is that I can't just do these solid lock bodies like for me with the with the progressive locks with the reload kit you don't I don't want you to see inside I want you to learn how to feel but the master keying system the best way to do it is to see it literally in action if everyone's following me here let me know in chat uh, by the way if you understand what I'm going at here um, or if you're confused by anything that I say. Otherwise, as I said before, and we're probably going to do this to at max 1130. Keep lurking, keep learning. So here's where things get expensive. Remember those cutaway locks at the security pins? You can get one for slightly cheaper, $20 flat before the shipping. That is the same cutaway, five pins, but again, it has this cutaway, and you can see inside of it, right? Just like the ones I showed earlier with the security ones. I need to get four of these, meaning at minimum before shipping, this alone is going to be 80 bucks, but it's going to be worth it. It's probably one of the, going to be one of the most expensive things I do, particularly piece by piece. I'm going to get these all, right? These are all five pins, just like these see-through ones, these cutaways. And I'm going to also spray paint them. I'm going to gut them, keep all the pins and the key and stuff, put cotton balls and some tape here and also cotton balls and tape to cover the window. And I'm gonna try and do it so the outer rim here has a color, but obviously the, I don't want the inside to be colored also that will ruin the lock systems. Uh, but I'm gonna block the front and the back and the crenulated part in the back, same thing with the others. And I'm gonna spray paint these. And I think the idea here is that I'm spray painting, I think the entire lock bodies if I remember correctly, I think either they're all going to be white or depending on how I look at the design, two of them are going to be white and two of them are going to be black just because it's easier. to. Actually, no, yeah, right. Two of them are going to be white and two of them are going to be black because there's a specific reason um, for how it's designed. Or they might be all white. Either one will work, to be honest. But definitely not all of them are black bodies. So they're at least going to be all white, if not too white, too black. And then I'm going to make cutouts of the different suits that are on the keys. So a spade, diamond, club, and a heart. And when I spray the lock, and I'm going to use their corresponding color, red and black, which I'm already going to have from the reload kit, and I'm going to add the two tiny ones at the top, the bottom, the front, maybe one on the back, and then one tiny one here, 
and one big one on the side that's not dremeled out, I'm going to put the heart or the club or whatever in that color. So no matter how you look at this lock, you'll be able to see a solid colored body with the symbol on it. And then I'm going to repin them all to the Masta wafering system so that now you have four bodies that are dremeled through so when I put the keys in or I pick them, you'll be able to see the key pins, the driver pins, and the wafer that's between the driver pins and the key pins. And you'll be able to see that when we put like, for example, the ultra master key in here, how the there'll be like three normal drivers, uh, sorry, uh, driving uh, driver pins, um, and two wafers that line up directly at the shear line. And if I put in, I don't know, the hearts that it is, it's, let's say this is the heart and I put the heart and the diamond, there'll be, again, that same pattern, but in a different order that will work. And if I put in the heart, it will work. But if I put in just the diamond key, it won't work. And if I put in like a club key, it won't work. And you'll be able to see that inside. So even though I have to buy four of these, so $80 plus the reload kit, and then I need to get white paint and take time, it's gonna be worth it. And I'm at least gonna pin one of these, maybe the master Uber mech key here, on air after all these are painted and all the rest of these, because these are a lot of key bodies. Uh, it's gonna be four of them are all done. I'll, sorry, I'll pin one last one. I'll, maybe I'll do the heart on air or the or the club. Maybe the club, probably the club. And uh, and then we will learn the mastering. I'll present the master, wa the master wavering system. So that's really expensive there. Yeah. How you organize? Yeah, thank you for that. I, again, I, I that's, again, I have a big passion for this. Um, I have a passion for this because not necessarily with locks. I had some insanely legendary, great, amazing, not just people, but in terms of like both amazing in terms of how good they are lock picking and amazing just people, men, women, aliens, dogs, teaching me this stuff and learning from them directly or indirectly. I, especially in coding and as someone who used to develop video games, no, and, and also went through the United States school system, elementary, middle, and especially high school and parts of college. I know exactly what it's like to have a bad teacher where they either hate your guts or even worse, their teaching method is just terrible and you and no one else has no idea what the fuck they're talking about. And so a lot of my teaching method, which I also partly credit because I think I kind of got this to some degree from my mom, but I had to learn a lot of this, is I learned in such a bad way so many different subjects that I had to unlearn or had hampered me or made me disinterested in the subject that I know no matter what I'm teaching how not to teach it cool what is it like on your planet snow I'm just curious what type of locks do you have on your planet tell me in chat um but yeah so a lot of this teaching method is again i know that people learn and i didn't go to college to teach i'm not a formal teacher i'm not like an elementary school or a college teacher this is on my own uh from just used to tutoring people i also do this with like privacy and security and browsers and privacy in general privacy as lock noob would probably call it um hence why we're also defcon 2 one's part of the efa which is the electronic frontier alliance and wow am i already i'm already near the mark so we're gonna get through the rest of this um, asset twin and fetch it, <laughs> fetch it base gear. Oh God, yeah. nuke your planet from orbit. I'm just kidding. I love you out there, Snow. Um, and again, if anyone else in chat is confused with what I'm saying or has a question or wants to shout out something, please do. Otherwise, keep learning, keep learning, and just don't be a major dick. That's our job. Uh, but yeah, uh, so again, like I said, my method is I know that people learn many different ways. Some people are very physical, hands-on. Some people you need to sit down and do stuff. Sometimes people want a general outline, leave alone. Some people like to read instructions. Some people need to see everything. Some people need to hear everything. Some people need to do everything. And I've covered all of that and just basic tools and stuff and mainly the methods. And also making sure to give people tips so that they don't make the same new mistakes that me and a bunch of other people have made that somehow a lot of instructors even when they've been doing this for years, don't realize the things such as, for example, when you're, here's a freebie, when you're doing the practice locks, whether you get them from Lockpick Extreme or from Tool, don't rotate them 100 degrees or even worse, 360 degrees around. You will wear out that lock and eventually break that practice tumbler, and then you have to order a new one, but you can't order them individually. You have to order the entire kit, essentially. So when you do it, just rotate it between 30 to 90 degrees to show that, hey, it actually rotates, and then rotate it back so that 
it, the lock resets itself, you know, back the way it came, like you would a normal pad lock. Don't rotate the whole thing around, you'll damage the lock. Uh, that's not normally in the tool instruction book thing. That's something that I have to constantly add when I'm either at tool meetings or presentations and I can actually speak or doing this in person. Someone said, I learned through black magic and observe situation information like a sponge. Yes, that's exactly why I did this show. This is kind of like I'm trying different teaching methods, but you know, it's very hard to do this through a uh, screen and uh, camera. So I hope people are learning and I hope people um, are doing stuff. Again, if I'm teaching poorly or you have a better method or you're confused, just, just let me know in chat and I, I will sit here and pause whatever I'm talking about and help you out. There's no rush through this. I'm not an elitist like, uh, you know, university lecturer, professor, PhD asshole or something or have a degree from Trump University, aka basically a crayon drawing on a piece of paper. So I will actually sit down and work with you. But yeah, so that so far is we just did, we made some intermediary stuff, color coded, both with the keys and the lock bodies, with the reload kit and the progressive kit. And I also just might get two sets of progressive kits just to round things out when we physically meet in person again. And uh, I'm going to do the master keying system the same way, except these will be drilled out locks. It's going to be more expensive. And I also have to do cutouts for symbols, but it should be all worth it because that way, unlike the reload kit, you can actually see what's going on in here. And then when physical meetups happen again, I'm definitely going to do one or two revolvers because it's a nice intermediary even with the progressive sets. And by the way, another teaching method again, see through whether dremeled out or clear, um, progressive and or super easy locks. And then one or two intermediary locks and maybe a hard one just for those assholes out there. Um, and this is to me a nice step between learning base pins and like the progressive spools that I have and learning how, uh, you know, with, you know, just having a couple of normal pins, but one or two of the security pins, how to learn all the security pins. If you can go around a circle once or twice, you know what you're doing. And then I put you on, um, stuff like, you know, the, uh, the American locks, 700s and, uh, 700s and 11,000 series and certain NASA Alboys and uh, um, Abuses and stuff like that. So FYI, I followed your crypto stream, so I'm very glad you introduced this as well. Thank you for that. Uh, I will mention the crypto stuff at the end because I know exactly what I'm doing this month, so just bear with me. But we're almost at the end of this episode. Okay, so more stuff. More stuff. This never ends. I One of these days, we're going to set up... We're actually actively looking into set up a... Buy me a cup of coffee, which is basically like a bootleg version of a Patreon or a Libre Pay system and cryptocurrency wallets and stuff because boy, would having a couple extra bucks help out with all of this. Um, we're not at Southord. Um, people have mixed opinions about Southord, but again, my, my case that I put somewhere is from Southord. Uh, not by choice, but it's been an okay case so far. This thing I really need out of everything from Southwards. The other two things I'm going to show are optional. I need this eventually. And again, I'm not going to get this until um, meetups start happening in person. And this is the... Now, There's they used to sell a cheaper version of this where you couldn't repin them. When they mean improve, they mean you can repin. It shows in this picture here. You can actually repin the locks. But this is the Southward Locksmith School in a Box kit. And this is because even though it might be a fun episode of me trying to make what's called a challenge wall where I take a piece of wood, cut holes out of it, and fit actual door locks in it, and you can see me and G.I. Jack accidentally lop off our thumbs and go deaf trying to do it, this to me is way easier. I'd rather sacrifice the money for this. What it is, it's a progressive series of locks, so it goes from two pins to five pins, but it has a wooden stand, and you can just interchange these out, and these are all oriented and are the same. I believe they are slags, I believe, um, that uh, are oriented and are based off of actual locks that you find on a doorknob or a door. And this is important because most of my kit, just because the nature of it having to be portable, most of my stuff is padlocks because I need you to be able to I need to be able to move them around they need to fit in these things I need you people because of that to hold it in their hand because I also intro using padlocks and tool in general a lot of places introduce using padlocks and those progressive tumblers or worse comes to worse which I'm also working on you put it in a portable vice that also hooks to your any table you put it on I won't be able to fit this in the kit this would be able to fit in the carry-on that I have for it the actual wheel part of this 
But this will be a, a godsend. And also, no, again, these are repinnable, so I might be able to eat the, I'll be able to get other doorknobs, take them apart, and then put these in and make like intermediary or even challenge ones. And I can just reuse the same wood stand over and over again. And this, because it's one thing to hold the padlock in your hand and eventually get used to this. It's another thing to have to tension it with the door and to know which orientation. And now, instead of doing it in your hand where you have leverage and you can put in a comfortable thing, now you're stuck at one particular angle that's not natural to do. And so I would gladly blow 100 plus bucks, which is 99 plus shipping, just to get this portable. Literally, a locksmith school in the box should really be called locksport training kit in a box. And that's the big thing I want from Southward. Here's two optional things I want from uh, Southward. I'm gonna skip ahead here. Oh, uh, did I, did I put it in here? Okay, um, two more things from Southward. We're gonna go a bit out of order. One is these pit comb sets. Now, they sell cheaper ones on these at Sparrows. There's a reason why I wanna do Southward because one, Lockpicking Lawyer store that I can't remember its name has the one that I want cheaper than this but his shit sells out in two seconds. So there's unless he personally sends the particular comb pick that I want, there's no way in hell I can have this too. So Southward means more expensive than Lock Picking Lawyer has this, it's a bypass tool. I'm not gonna explain how it works, but it's a bypass tool that goes all the way up to six pins. Because remember, my teaching method is I want you to see how this works. Now I have thought of buying yet another Dremel through Lock for $20 and taking a couple of the pins out so you can see but I think honestly I already have the clear lock and I need a set of comb picks anyhow just for my own personal use as well as again I can take the extra two uh, the extra um, two and uh, sorry four and five uh, spaced comb pick and put them in the general set but my clear lock is six pins meaning that if I get the one from sparrows it only does five pins it will never open <laughs> So that's why I particularly want this. It's not a necessity, but eventually I'll get a six comb pick one just for demo, and then the rest of these can be for students. Uh, and the other one, uh, oh, that's the only two from South Ord, I think. I think so, right? Yeah, that's the only two from South Ord. So let's go back here. Another one from Sparrows is the Gridlock. Last year, and we're gonna try to do it again sometime this year when we can do less social distancing safely, especially if the vaccine's involved. Um, I want to teach how to bypass, pick, and rake automotive locks, which are basically double-sided wafer locks that most of the time go way past just four or five wafers. And so I'm really glad that um, Sparrows, and I've never seen this anywhere else, has a progressive kit for them that starts with, uh, what is it? I think it's, um, they say it down here, I think. It goes from three, wafer, three wafers, six wafers, to the full t 10 wafers that your average auto lock has. Usually a car has between six to 10 of these. And it has the same grease and everything on them. I'm also gonna salvage some um, automotive locks from like the junkyard or on resale. And there might be one or two that I think I can get, I think at lockpicktools.com, they're on the little pricey side, that are see-through so people can actually see what's going on in them. But yeah, and actually the most difficult part that you don't see here, that I don't have up, is not getting a progressive kit for these sort of double-sided wafer locks there, particularly for cars, and also that a lot of lock sporting avoids car lock picks. And I will do this grid lock on air, by the way, but one, because it's seen as this, like, there's technically nothing illegal learning how to pick these automotive, technically automotive locks, but car manufacturers are a bit more Nintendo DMCA about this than uh, Master Lock or American Lock or Asa Alboy is. Like, Asa Alboy basically doesn't quite give a crap about lock sporters. Volkswagen will sue your ass or you'll be looked on more sketchy in the car and police world. Uh, for some reason, like for some reason, picking apart an American lock that's common on store business fronts and banking vaults is okay, but knowing an automotive jiggler somehow makes you worse. I don't know. Uh, here comes a new incent reward coming up. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna go on. I do one last sip of water. I'm gonna have a fun nap after this, folks. So, uh, the difficult part is actually getting picks for this because most people and I will get these in Sparrow sell them just get jiggler keys or, or jigglers or essentially they rake the lock open or 
you use an automotive bypass on the door itself. No one ever goes through the keyway anymore. It's considered useless because there's just so many. It's like the same base thing I said on the bypass episode, There's although there's a specific reason why this doesn't work in the padlock and door world, but it does work in the automotive world, which is if the bypasses are so easy to do um, and simple, why do we learn single pin picking? That actually does, that question does work in the automotive world. And also note, a long time ago, like 60s and before, cars used to have pin and tumbler locks for their engine and doors engine ignition and doors so that's a fun fact so if you like go to cuba and you find like a car from the 1960s you could probably use your normal lock picking tools and single pin pick it open just like you would a door lock or a padlock nowadays fun fact um but they don't really make tools now there's tools from goso but um the for the fact that one goso the actual reason why I got that Distatainer clear lock is because I originally bought a different thing from them and they accidentally sent me that after like a month later. Two, that tubular lock thing I showed because I forgot to tell this story. I bought that last year in June. And the Chinese manufacturer got it to China's post service and the Chinese post service is all that processed in three days. Then it went to US Customs in mid-May it finally passed U.S. Customs and got to the post office. So January, February, March. Five months later, I got the tubular lock thing because of these tariffs and also even worse now how bad, unfortunately, the United States Postal, Postal Service is thanks to the Postmaster General that is so evil and suck-ass at his job. I more like to call him the uh, Post-Serial General instead of the Postmaster General. Um, but yeah, uh, Goso sells automotive picks for these in a kit. I can't get them. There's also a mo uh, automotive set that actually has single pin picks. Um, I do have a set of rakes for these that someone let me borrow that does automotive. Because the problem is that because once you get past six wafers, when you get to ten, most picks, even the um, ball and, and uh, snowman ones, don't reach enough to reach the ten wafers. So you need to, which I'm thinking one, make picks that are slightly longer uh, or you find a clever way to purchase them and those are uncommon because it's just easier to bypass or jiggle your way through but I will do automotive double uh, car automotive locks aka double sided wafer locks thanks to sparrows and a couple of other things so we have a few more quick things here um, one not necessarily from this co company but I am going to get because I know where to get this cheaper uh, we will be covering dimple locks I actually got set back in two ways. One, you can only get a clear dimple lock from China or locally through other means, so I'm working on that. I'm probably going to get this first, and it'll probably show up sooner because the other problem is that the best dimple pick so far is Lock Picking Lawyers Designs uh, Black Flag picks from Sparrows because otherwise you're just getting picks from China, and again, that will take forever. But they recently delist them from the Sparrow store because apparently they're remaking them and relaunching them sometime in 2021, and they won't know when, and they won't tell me. I will have, I ever know a reseller that still has the old models. So basically, once I get this clear one in and the pick in, I will demo how dimple locks work on air, and as well as have this in person, and then a couple months later, which is actually the stupid easy part, I'll go on to Amazon or eBay and actually get some dimple locks. Another lock type I'm also going to work on is the cruciform or cross-shaped lock, which, to sum it up, has usually four, maybe five, very rare to have six pins, but if you notice the tip here, which looks like a screw, there are pins on each side. So even though you can tension this with a normal tension wrench, you have to single pin pick each row before it actually turns and opens their shear line. There is specially designed rakes for them, though, that I'm also going to get with this. That will be cool to test out. And finally, which I am forced to order through GoSo, which means I'm honestly giving them until the end of December of 2021 for this to come in. GoSo is the only company I can find that will actually sell a clear multi-T lock. I've never been able to find one dremeled. If you know where you can find one dremeled with a window, let me know. Go to the multi-T lock, and these are high security locks that are made in Israel, and they're actually kind of semi-uncommon in the United States, like they're more way more common than dimple locks. And they have a dimple lock design, but they often have 
sometimes they only have one row of dimple lock pins, but so, a lot. But sometimes if they're actually high security, they'll have two rows of these, and they are what's known as pin in pin. So there's an outer pin, and inside is a cylinder with an inner pin, and you have to pick both to their shear line, and there's multiples of them in order to open them. They're big pain in the asses to deal with. Um, finally, uh, because I actually have a couple up here, um, does anyone in chat know what these are? I'm sorry for the small window frame. In fact, I will very quickly temporarily, for anyone paying attention, chat, go to the face mode. Uh, so that way you get a bigger image here. Does anyone know what these are? This is from Sparrows. This is a generic one that GI Jack gave me, and this is a specific one, and you can, I guess, ape the bidding off of this, that my mentor Night Owl did at a super early uh, DEF CON to one meeting when we met in person back in our first year in 2017 uh, that opens almost any, if not any, Smith, as you can tell by the logoing, Smith and Wesson of these. Does anyone know what these are in chat? I'm going to give you all 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 1 and a half, 1 and 3 quarters. Pascal's wager. Infinity. Yes, as someone said, those are cuff keys. Those are universal cuff keys. So. Eventually, 90 times soon probably, I think this is going to be more like mid to late summer, we will be dealing with handcuffs. This is going to be really fun because Night Owl specialty is handcuffs. And so I'm probably going to get a lot of advice from him. I've already learned a couple of things from him. I just don't have the same tools that he has. But probably, honestly, this model, I'm going to get a clear see-through, color-coded handcuff that well, that, so you can actually not only see the different mechanisms highlighted in different colors, but you can also test the bypasses on him as well as the tryout keys, such as that's where the key goes right there. And the shim bypass goes through this teething mechanism. There's a technique with that. Um, I'm also, whether I have Night Owl's help or I get this because this is going to be really expensive, but to me it'd be worth it. This is something I probably get in the fall when I get like a bonus is they do sell a kit that has all these different types of common handcuffs. And some of them, even law enforcement uses. And last but not least, I don't know how and I don't know when. Remember, this is not all the things I'm working on for the expansion. I'm going to teach people, again, how to make their own lock picks. But instead of the DIY using um, bobby pins, which went okay last time I kind of got the wrong bobby pins. They worked on some things, other things they didn't work on too well. Um, but I'm gonna get uh, not only windshield wiper inserts, but just for ease of use, I'm gonna get some of these Sparrows DYI blanks. Never mind that I kind of want these and kind of shave more of the handle down to possibly make the automotive picks that I want. I can make like in mass three of each like type of pick, so that way I have them and we can single pin pick uh, automotive locks uh, on air and in person when uh, again originally I was going to do the automotive stuff because we were going to do a whole automotive like village in Jersey City outside but then COVID happened this was going to happen last spring and a lot of things that were delayed because of this a lot of stuff with lock sports too that now we're going to try to initiate again as things clear up hopefully but I'm on air with a final Dremel and stuff, I'm not only gonna show you how to create your own picks from scratch, or near scratch, because these are like pre-pressed steel, but I am also going to do something I've been wanting to do and show how you can make an electric toothbrush that you can get anywhere, including Walgreens or Rite Aid, into one of the best snap gun instant open lock shims you can ever have. And so yeah, that is this episode. So, uh, don't leave yet. Thank you for everyone watching. Um, let me just snap ahead here. Here we go. Um, thank you all for watching. I hope you uh, learned and enjoyed a lot. Again, we didn't really cover any new ground. This was more of, hey, it's awesome that 2020 is finally fucking over. 
And so we are going, I just wanted to recap of how I started something, something small in early 2020, just a progressive series, um, some uh, master lock um, 140s and some old used picks and expanded this into a whole training kit that I take everywhere that a lot of people will really enjoy um, and learn a lot from, which, you know, the kit alone does half the work. I also have to teach my methods. But then also, that this is only half of it, how also that later on, and remember I didn't even show everything, I'm gonna expand so we can do things like automotive lock picking, um, dimple locks, uh, what did I cover? multi t cruciform, um, dedicated learning intermediaries, uh, master wafings, master wafer systems. Another thing I didn't even show here is I want to get some lotto locks, um, not only because they're actually good training security locks, but also to teach people what a lotto lock is. Does anyone know in chat what it is? Say that real quick if you can. Um, and how to identify them in that whole universe. That was actually going to be an in-person DEF CON 201 talk at one point. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to find a YouTube channel that we, uh, not YouTube, bleh, a Twitch channel. For all of you out there on Twitch, I'm going to find a Twitch channel that hopefully you're going to uh, raid. And right now, unfortunately, nothing is speaking to me. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually uh, hopefully look at a channel that we haven't seen before. And since I'm in that category, we're going to go to the cra uh, making and crafting section. Now I'm just going to pick something that might be cool. Oh, this is immediately cool. Yeah, not only will we, if he'll let us raid his channel, I am following that shit immediately. That, that is fucking sexy right there. Okay, that, that is cool as hell. So, as I set this up, again, thank you for everyone who's watching. Thank you, Dissa Del Mona. Um, I want to let people know the future stuff. Our next meeting, again, is on December 15th. I don't know what time. I'm going to guess it's going to probably start at uh, 6, uh, 6 o'clock uh, Eastern Standard Time. All of us are Eastern Standard Time because it's, it's New Jersey. Um, and our next Master of Unlocking, because remember, we're the first and third Saturday, uh, Sundays will be on uh, next, next Sunday or uh, January 17th. Uh, I'm going to have something really cool for that that I will announce next week once I put that all together. I'm also really excited to do this whole charity thing uh, in any way that I can for Lockpickers Unite. Thank you, Lockpickers Unite, a.k.a. our Lockpickers uh, on Reddit, for uh, letting me know about this. And uh, I will announce this on air, not only on my next lock, Master of Unlocking, I will announce it at our main meeting where we get a shit ton of eyeballs on it. And um, we should have a hack all commander this week, breaking into the new year. We're definitely going to have two Archfiles Linux perspective, second to third um, Thursday of every month. Um, this upcoming, because it's a weird month the way it's laid out. Basically, we're going to have one dead week near the end of the month. Um, this upcoming Saturday and the following Saturday, uh, which will be the 9th and the 23rd will be my show crypto barons where we learn about uh cryptocurrency and blockchain technology as technology and i can already tell you one sentence what we're going to do there first episode we're going to go over dm it's okay if you haven't heard of it basically facebook is doing something really sneaky and that's going to be a fun episode with a lot of code and policy to deal with and then the following episode of crypto barons uh if you haven't heard Weed is basically now legal in New Jersey, and we're going to cover how cryptocurrency impacts the cannabis market, and including cryptocurrencies that directly affect and feed into and designed for the cannabis market. So don't forget those. And also, who knows, maybe we'll have one or two specials. We have a ton of stuff lined up from now until at least uh, July, August, including potential cons we might go to when they things open up. So I hope you learned a bunch. I can't wait to see the next Master of Unlocking. Trust me, I'm not exaggerating or kidding. Where I'll put it this way. I don't know if you're going to be learning a lot of new techniques. It's not going to be a tutorial. We're going to get back into tutorials again, more stuff. I might cover dimple locks in February. I might cover, um, I might do the repinning. It depends on what things come in first, what gets done first. Next one's going to be relaxed. I don't know how much you're going to learn. I'm pretty sure we're all going to learn stuff by accident, but wait till you see what I'm going to do. You're going to really enjoy this. Um, we're going to go raid this guy's stream. Let's see if he'll allow us to raid. 
Yes, he does. Thank you all for watching. I hope on Twitch you check this guy out. Um, he's really awesome. Um, if you want, if you like this content, you like the show, you can click like, share, subscribe on Twitch D Live, YouTube, or Facebook. Uh, you can find us more at DefCon201.org. You can find us on social media such as Twitter, DefCon21NJ. And we're also on um, Instagram, uh, GitHub, and all of that, the hostx.social instance of Mastodon. Um, and uh, basically, that's the end of Master of Locking. Hope you guys learned a lot. Uh, all you uh, key pins and driver pins out there, hack the planet. Dirty Jersey represents, and I will see you on the 17th at 8 p.m. Uh, Sunday. Uh, January, uh, so the 17th of January, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, same lock time, same lock place. Enjoy the music. Say hi to the streamer rating. Peace.